doesn't want to be a fourth or fifth or sixth round pick. He'd like to be a first or a second round pick. And he's got a lot to prove today because when you play in this environment, the NFL scouts will be turning this tape on first when they watch Kenny Pickett. One of the most experienced quarterbacks in college football. He'll throw a swing pass to Addison on first down and he's dropped for a loss of five. Theo Jackson in the backfield for Tennessee. Well, Theo Jackson coming off the best game of his career a week ago. Aggressive, trying to get the bubble screen to the boundary, and an excellent job splitting the blockers and getting the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of four on the first play. Pick it to the air again. And his pass is off target, going for Addison. So two straight plays. They target Jordan Addison, and it's third and 14. Tell you what, Dusty, couldn't be a better start for Tennessee on defense. You've got the crowd cranking, and you're going to have great field position if you can force a three and out here. No doubt, Tom. Tyler Barron off the edge, nine, their best pass rusher. Pickett dumping it off to Vincent Davis, and that's it. Got back to the line of scrimmage, but a three and out for Pitt. Good start defensively for Tennessee. Well, the energy's in the stadium with the crowd, as Tom alluded to. And this defense under Tim Banks, first-year defensive coordinator, as he makes the trip from Penn State, has this group hungry, flying around the field. Speed to the football on that opening possession for the Volunteer D. Chris Dulu will punt from his own end zone, a semifinalist for the Ray Guy Award a year ago. Trayvon Flowers is deep for Tennessee. Here come the Volunteers, they blocked it on the goal line. The ball is free at the two, and Tennessee jumps on it there. Christian Charles with the block. Well, partner, I had a chance to talk with the special teams coordinator, Coach Eckler, before the game, and he told me they identified something on tape. They felt that they had a fantastic chance to come after the opening punt. He told me, watch, 14's going to come clean. I mentioned it to you, and wow, perfect execution. They had practiced this all week and found the perfect opportunity, and what a start here in Rocky Top. As you told me, the, the coaches felt that there was a weakness and they were coming after that first punt. Time perfectly, and it'll be first and goal from the two-yard line for the Vols. Joe Milton, Michigan transfer is the quarterback. He'll give it the small, and he's into the end zone for the Tennessee touchdown. Good power inside run. Jabari Small going to get a lot of run today with Tyon Evans out. Good vision, but there just lowers the shoulder and gets into the end zone. Going to have a penalty too here, guys. Darnell Wright, number 58, as part of the celebration in the end zone, took his helmet off. And they're going to get a 15 yarder here after this kick. Stuart Mullins, ACC crew. Is over. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense. Number 58. His first in the game. The 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. So, undisciplined play there. It will not please the new head coach, Josh Heifel, who came over from UCF where he went 28 and 8. Tennessee won its first game against Bowling Green. And a great start for the balls less than 90 seconds in and they laid it seven nothing. Well Josh Heupel could not have orchestrated a better start to this game. The defense gets a quick three and out and then give the special teams coordinator Mike Eckler a ton of credit. Identified a weakness on tape took advantage and a huge block punt. And then it's Jabari Small finishing off falls on top early here in Knoxville. Tennessee with a block punt and then small punching it in from a couple of yards out and the balls with the early lead here on Rocky Top true freshman Christian Charles almost caught that ball off the foot of the punter Chris Dulu. first time in two years that they blocked a punt 
but a penalty on the point after and so it's a or on the touchdown rather so 15 yards and they'll kick it from the 20 so a chance a good field position here for the Panthers Barden from the 15 yard line and he's gobbled up at the 29. All right, let's go back and take a look at this block. You're going to see a down block here, a down block here. Here's Charles, and he's going to get skinny through the gap and come almost untouched. See how he gets skinny and narrow through the gap, almost takes it off the foot of the punter. Everybody can have a plan. That was planned in the execution by the true freshman off the charts in Christian Charles. Second pit possession will start from the 30 yard line. They went backwards on their first drive before the block punt. They're going to run it and nowhere to go. What a play by Tyler Barron all over Davis, the running back. Another negative play for the Panthers, a loss of two. You see Barron come off, get underneath the offensive tackle, bringing pressure off the edge. Tim Banks, very aggressive here early. This ball D came to play. They had 11 tackles for a loss in week one, their most in four years, and the fifth most in all of college football week one. It'll be Davis again trying to run between the tackles, pushes the pile out to the 31 for a three-yard gain. Let's go to Matt Berry in the studio. Hey, guys, good afternoon. Time now for the AT&T 5G studio update. How's this for the first play of the game? East Carolina, South Carolina, that is running back Tyler Sneed just spinning it. 75 yards for the touchdown. That's how they opened up. East Carolina up early on top. 7 0. Matt, meanwhile, a third down and nine. Pick it to the air. And on a drag route, it's caught. Jacques Louis able to break one tackle, but he will not get the first down. Brought down about three yards short of a line to gain. See if the Panthers bring on the kicking team again. After they had the block punt, they will boot it away. Well, it's another pressure. You see both inside linebackers come well picked up and protected. Jacques Louis tries to shake loose, but you see the effort by the volunteer defense running to the football and stopping him short of the first down. Chris Dulu will punt from his 22. Theo Jackson is the deep man for Tennessee. And what a start for this volunteer defense. Had so many players that left the program after the firing of Jeremy Pruitt and the investigation of recruiting violations. But it's a great start here for this young Tennessee team. They'll start this drive though inside their 20 yard line but they lead 7 nothing. Let's take a look at the lineup we've got for you in ESPN and ABC through Monday. U.S. Open Women's Final will follow us here on ESPN. Saturday Night Football on ABC, Washington and Michigan from the Big House. Tomorrow we got the men's title with Djokovic trying to complete the first calendar Grand Slam since 1969. And then Monday Night Football, Ravens Raiders, Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Lewis Riddick on ESPN, Peyton and Eli Manning on ESPN2. Peyton, of course, legendary volunteer. Milton's pass is caught at the 25 and out near the first down is Princeton fan a tight end they like to flex out the gain of nine. And you see with Joe Milton he's got all the measurables six foot five 245 plus pound big arm on the screen game ball gets out quick. They're going to run small and he's got the first down so small already has 24 carries on the season he had 26 all of last year. Tyon Evans is the number one running back but he's not available today. So small will get the bulk of the carries gets another attempt here gain of only one brought down by Servassier Dennis and Kansi. And Jabari Small is going to get a lot of run today as we mentioned Tyon Evans out and Kalijah Kansi on that play very impactful quick twitch defensive lineman for Pitt. Empty set here for Milton. He fakes the quarterback run, gets rid of it on a pop pass to Fant, and it's a first down. It's a good throw there by Milton. We were watching in practice. He was very accurate yesterday. I love the sell he has here. You anticipate big body, some quarterback run. The pressure gets there. It's a great sell by Milton, and a nice duck down to his tight end. Graduated from Michigan in three years, started five games a year ago. Play action here for Milton. In the pocket, takes a shot, unloading a deep ball. Broken up at the last second, incomplete. 
Jalen Hyatt is down. He couldn't come up with a play. Marquez Williams in coverage. There's also a penalty flag back near the line of scrimmage. Well, Hyatt, maybe their best receiver, still down. Williams is hurt as well. But man, you see the arm strength. Officials <laughs> time out for an injured player. Was a holding call on Javantez Spragan, so we'll sort that out and see if both players are all right when we come back. Welcome back to Knoxville. Let's take a uh, look at the keys to victory today brought to you by Barbecue Guys. And want to give you some insight on the decisions of Joe Milton. Basically, this is a box count. He counts five in the box. You see the, the linebacker widen out. Now we're going to run it because we have enough blockers to block the box on defense. So Joe Milton just counting numbers in the box pre-snap. Now look at this look. We've got seven men in the box, only six to block. So what do we do? We've got two on one at the bottom of the screen. Simple math. We throw the built-in quick screen and we move the football. Those decisions were made well by Joe Milton last week. What he didn't do well last week, guys, was throw the deep ball with accuracy. That shot that was just negated by a penalty in the drop was his best deep ball throw he's had in two weeks. No question, Lugs. And talking with quarterbacks coach Joey Hosel, Hosley, that's exactly what they worked on all week in practice. Milton looking deep again, and the pass is high and incomplete going for Jimmy Callaway. Inaccuracy has been Milton's biggest weakness because you look at him, 6'5", 245. He, he's... They told us a great athlete, but not yet a great runner and inconsistent with his accuracy. But he was great in practice yesterday. On second and 20, going to take off here, showing his running ability. And he's hard to bring down in the open field. Dragged down at the 47 yard line. So they get about 12 on a second and 20 play. And with what Pitt wants to do, loading up that box, taking away the run game, you get a plus one with the quarterback. And it's 6'5", 245, a big athletic runner with the football. Going to be a big piece of this offense today and throughout the season for the Volunteers. He's got three years of eligibility left after transferring from Michigan. He played all of last year with a thumb injury. Said he couldn't grip the ball. Ended up having surgery in the offseason. He'll spin it here on third down and seven. Another deep ball with single coverage. That one overthrown, incomplete. And the receiver, Javante Payton, beat his man. So it's fourth down. Shots, shots, and shots. You're going to see Joe Milton take his opportunities down the field all day. They think they can win. And one-on-one -on -one coverage down the field just overshoots his intended target. Be a lot more opportunities throughout the rest of the day for that, Luke's. Yeah, Dusty, this is what we talked about. Week one, he missed two of those shots exactly like that that would have been for touchdowns. So got to continue to improve that consistent accuracy. We know he's got the physical attributes. Can he make the right throws? Paxton Brooks, six foot six inch punter on, and Pitt got close to that one. Stovall is deep, going to let it go over his head, and that dies at the two yard line. What an incredible punt! By Paxton Brooks and Pitt be backed up for the second time. Was that your sandwich there, Dave? <laughs> Might be somebody's sandwich, not mine, though. Later this afternoon on ABC, a top 10 matchup from Ames, Iowa State, and Iowa. And then tonight, we're talking about Michigan, where Joe Milton transferred from the Wolverines, taking on a Washington team that lost to Montana last week. You can watch all the games on the ESPN app as well. That scene in Ames, wow. That Cyhawk trophy, first time ever. Both been in the top 10. It's going to be a knockdown drag out. What do you like in that game? As, you know, going in, Iowa played so well out of the shoot against Indiana. And, you know, really, Iowa State did not play well against Northern Iowa. I actually think that works to Matt Campbell and what he wants to do. I think they probably had a great week of practice. I think the Cyclones finally beat Iowa for the first time in the Matt Campbell tenure. Meanwhile, Pitt is backed up. That loud Tennessee fan base in the end zone, making it difficult here on Kenny Pickett and the Pitt offense. Vincent Davis gets the carry and drilled at the four yard line by Jackson. Here's Matt Berry. All right, guys, Rocket Morgan studio update time. I just showed you a first play touchdown in East Carolina, South Carolina. I've got another one, Michigan State, Youngstown State. I mean, I don't know why you're dialing up a flea flicker early on against Youngstown State, but it worked. First play touchdown, all Sparty, 14-0.
Meanwhile, second and long here, Matt. Another run play, another hard hit. Vincent Davis's head hit the turf there. Jackson in there again. So it'll be third down for the Panthers. Third down and six. Theo Jackson just all over the field right now. Really a leader of this defense. And you see Jawan Mitchell, the transfer from Texas, getting in on the action. This volunteer defense is amped up and really came to play here to start this ballgame. 23 year old quarterback Kenny Pickett elected to come back to college instead of going to the NFL and that pass off the mark getting the perimeter is Davis but he's knocked out of bounds short of the line to gain. So it'll be fourth down and another punt coming it'll be the third punt of the day for the Panthers. How about Trayvon Flowers yes. right there coming from his safety spot that should have been a first down Dusty. No question it's an outstanding job by Vincent Davis making the initial defender miss and you see the effort from this ball defense it was Alante Taylor it was Trayvon Flowers negating the first down great effort in pursuit to the football. Chris Dulu had his first punt in the same spot on the field blocked. Tennessee punched it in from two yards out this time the balls do not come after him. Jackson waiting for it and the fair catch made at the Tennessee 49. Time of possession heavily favoring the Volunteers so far in this game and Joe Milton the junior quarterback from the Orlando area was recruited by Tennessee head coach Josh Heupel when he was the offensive coordinator at Missouri but ended up going to Michigan where he played for Jim Harbaugh three years started five games last year went two and three we talked about thumb injury he told us he couldn't even grip a water bottle it was that bad a year ago had surgery arrived to Tennessee in the summer after spring ball so he's had what 15 practices before last week That's exactly right so physically gifted he's got the size the arm strength and now a clean slate with a new coaching staff a new scheme and the opportunity to make the most of the end of his career here in Tennessee play action here Milton another shot downfield single coverage and again overthrows the intended target this time it was Jimmy Callaway who did not play last week because of an injury. Again, this is something they really worked on trying to put more air underneath the football as Milton takes a shot when he delivers the pass well beyond his intended target. Tennessee goes very quickly in offense they run it here off the left side and a gain of about three for Jabari Small bringing up third and long. We're going back to what Luke's put together. Great job about the box count. This offense is about tempo and space and going quick. Milton stepping up throwing deep on the run and again overthrows the intended receiver. There is a flag down. Walker Merrill the true freshman couldn't come up with a play. I don't know if Pitt got off the field defensively in time there are two penalty markers down we talked about the tempo it's having an impact on the road team right now the tempo of Tennessee's offense there are two fouls on the play both by the defense illegal substitution 12 players on the field that penalty is declined offside number five five yard penalty third down well and this is part of it you know Tom showed the spacing and how it gives you a box count and now you see with the tempo you can't substitute against this offense they put you in compromising situations well done by Joe Milton getting his offense ready and getting pit off guard. So it goes from third and seven to third and two and another penalty marker down. This appears to be on the volunteers movement on the left side it looked like partner. Seventh year for Pat Narduzzi three eight win seasons made the ACC title game in 2018. And with some of the losses last week, Miami, North Carolina, they feel pretty good about their chances to win the division this year. Full start. Number 78. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Please reset the game clock to 7 11. 7 11, please. Narduzzi spent almost a decade at Michigan State as a defensive coordinator. And, and trying to think of all the history and one of the reasons this game is being played is to honor Johnny Majors who coached at both places and was one of the best players in Tennessee history. But Pitt hasn't had a ton of success lately. Under Walt Harris and Dave Wanstead they had a couple of good seasons with Pat Narduzzi trying to get them to be a contender each year. And he has them headed in that direction. But Bayless Jones keeps the drive alive for Tennessee breaking a tackle out in space on third and seven. 
and getting the first down. Watch the blocking on the perimeter. Cedric Tillman really helped set this up, securing his man and allowing Bayless Jones to make people miss and get the first down. And again, the Volunteers going quick. Milton with a play fake, stepping up, moving to his right, firing it downfield, and that ball incomplete. Well, that was a bullet thrown in the direction of Bayless Jones. Couldn't come up with it. And a big hit by Brandon Hill. You see the safety come in, good tight coverage. And as Bayless Jones tries to bring that in, the hit jars it loose. Well done by the sophomore safety. Pittsburgh's dragging a little bit, guys. They're trying to substitute because they're tired. They're not trying to get the right personnel on the field. They're trying to get fresh personnel on the field. And they got another guy running off at the last second, John Petrishin. Avoid a penalty. Oh, Milton's got a man wide open. And again, he overthrows him. Oh, my. Cedric Tillman had a walk-in touchdown as Pitt had all kinds of confusion defensively, and Milton missed him. Confusion. It's the play-action fake. It gets those safeties up, opens up the middle of the field, and one Joe Milton really wishes he could have back. That's an easy walk-in six for Cedric Tillman. And once again, Joe Milton showing the same problems he had in week one, not being able to connect in that deep ball. Now instead, it's third down and 10 for Tennessee. When it should be 14 nothing. Hit offside. Did they get back onside in time? Nope. Free play. Milton again throwing it downfield. And again, throws it way too deep. Out of the end zone this time to Ramel Keaton. Offside. Number six, defense. Five yard penalty. Third down. John Morgan, the third offside, so it'll be third down and five. Boy, we, we talked about this yesterday where it seemed like the pit coaches were really relaxed mm -hmm. yesterday. And it seems like they're playing relaxed. The, the focus and intensity isn't matching Tennessee right now. And all the penalties on the Panthers. You're exactly right. This Tennessee team focused, dialed in, and Pitt not so far here early. So third down and five. Milton zips it to the sideline. That one's on the money. Warren with the catch, and it's a first down for the Volunteers. That's a timing route. That ball's out of the hand of Milton just as Warren gets out of his cut. Perfectly executed pass, and a little bit of a pick set on the outside. There by the outside receiver. Well done on third and medium. Yeah, that was Ramil Keaton. Play seven of the drive coming up. Milton from the pocket in trouble and swallowed. At the 29 yard line, a two yard sack. Have a Baldonado, junior from Rome, Italy, made the play, second and 12 for Tennessee. Well, Baldonado's got a long frame, really good hands, former MMA fighter, and this is what Pat Narduzzi needs pressure on Milton. Milton again hanging in the pocket, long throw that's caught at the 22 by Jones and pushed out by Williams. So they get a little bit of it back. It'll be third and six. This is what we got for you later today. Utah BYU to cap things off tonight on ESPN at 10 15. Third and six for the balls on the 23. In field goal range here. And a shovel pass. And well done by Pitt defensively. They figured that out. Jalen Wright dumped at the 20. Gain of three. Fourth and three. What do you do? I think you take the points. You take the points. You got a chance to go up two scores here early, Luke. I think this is a no-brainer. No-brainer, and let's not forget it's not just about what you're doing on offense and, and getting the points. It's the fact that Pitt hasn't crossed their own 25-yard line yet. So you've got great field position advantages. Well, Tennessee feels good about its kicker. Chase McGrath got a lot of experience. He was at USC, was the kicker there for three years. Didn't play, though, last year. Second attempt of the season made a 43 yarder last week. This is a 37 yarder and it just sneaks inside that left upright to make it 10 nothing Tennessee. ESPN College Football is presented by Marathon driven forward. And in part by Walmart, save money, live better. Josh Heupel with the houndstooth coat honoring the late Johnny Majors, a coach of Tennessee, played at Tennessee, also coached at Pitt, won the national championship in 1976. Died at 85 in Knoxville, June of 2020. These teams will meet again in Pittsburgh at Heinz Field, September 10th of 2022. 
Tennessee up 10 nothing. Barden on the goal line. Long run and boy Tennessee on special teams has been phenomenal here early on. Rucker was down there for the balls. And Pitt will start inside its 10. Boy they have been tenacious flying down as you mentioned partner. Getting down the field nowhere to go with all the run lanes. And a swarming Tennessee special teams here in the early goings. The third time already Pitt has had to snap the ball from inside its 10. Look at the average drive is started at the 14 for Pitt but it feels like most of their plays have been run from inside the 10 that's where the drive started they just keep going backwards because of negative plays and Pickett has to get out of the end zone does he's a really good runner and he steps out around the 15 yard line he had eight rushing touchdowns a year ago more athletic than people think really accurate on the move as you see him get nice yardage on first down kept his eyes down the field the entire time it was good coverage by the Tennessee defense and a smart play by the veteran quarterback closing in and passing Dan Marino on the passing chart at Pitt hands it off here and it's a first down run for a Banacanda out to the 21. Best piece of running there so far by Pitt. Banacanda, I like the way he runs behind his pads. He's quick, fast, and a physical runner for this pit offense. Yeah, gained 30 pounds since enrolling a year ago. He's a sprint champ in high school. Pickett, backside pressure. Pickett is brought down at the 19 yard line by Theo Jackson. Well, Theo Jackson just all over the field. We'll watch him come off the edge here, unaccounted for. As he's going to get home and get clean, get just enough of Kenny Pickett's legs and get him to the ground. Coming off the best game of his career against Bowling Green. A fantastic start for the senior Theo Jackson. They have an excellent defensive coordinator in Tim Banks who came over from Penn State. First year with the Vols. Pickett has wide open receiver. It's crawled the tight end. It was a huge target at 6'6", 260. He has a first down across the 31 yard line. This is a real weapon for this offense. You mentioned the size and an understanding of where to sit down in those zones. This linebacker Aaron Beasley fell and Kenny Pickett identified his open target. Tim Banks the D.C. for Tennessee doing an excellent job. Pickett has time to throw and has a completion out near midfield and into Tennessee territory is Taysier Mack. 22 yard game. Excellent route here by Taysir Mack. Working one on one with Elante Taylor. Watch this. Great route. A little back shoulder throw on the comeback. Quality job by Mack getting up the field after the catch. Getting some of that yak. Guy that's battled injury. Had 63 catches two years ago. Only 20 last year. Big hit in the middle of the field, but a completion as Abana Kanda out of the backfield was able to hang onto that ball after a gain of about four. Solon Page with the stick for Tennessee. I'll tell you, Dusty, this is this rhythm that Pitt has now. You can see some life now coming back into the Pitt sideline. They're just so suffocated in the shadow of their own end zone. Now they feel like they can actually play their offense. Pick it to the air on second down and six. Now he steps up to run. And he gets maybe a yard brought down by Elijah Simmons. So third down coming up. Good coverage down the field. And Kenny Pickett, really a sound job going through his progressions. Nothing is there. Tries to just get what he can with his legs. Third down coming. They go empty here. Pickett with time on loads complete. Addison with a first down catch at the 26 yard line. Best drive of the day by far for the Panthers. Excellent job by the offensive line. Quality pocket for Kenny Pickett. You see it open up right there. Steps into the throw and finds his favorite target, Addison, over the middle. 16 yard pickup. They go empty again. Pickett. Pressure coming from the balls. Pickett throwing it deep. And there's some contact. Boy, I don't know that that ball was catchable, though. 
Flowers collides with Addison, but that ball landed about four yards out of the end zone. Pass interference. Number one. Defense. 15-yard penalty. And an automatic. First down. I think that's what Josh Heupel is saying. Like, I don't know if that's catchable with where the ball landed. See at the top there, clearly contact though down the field. Yeah, but what, was he going to even get a chance to catch the ball? I don't know. It's clearly interference, clearly but interference. you look where it landed. Fourth penalty already by Tennessee, and so Pitts got the ball on the 11-yard line. Now function with the chains. Trying to get the chain set up because they can still get a first down before the end zone. With the ball outside the 10. It's out a minute to go here in the opening quarter. 10 0 Tennessee. Well, Kenny Pickett, a guy that 23 years old, the second straight year as a captain, he told us yesterday he's become very good friends with Vol legend Peyton Manning. They text all the time. And one of the reasons Pickett said he came back to school instead of going to the NFL, because he said Peyton did some work for him behind the scenes, called some of his friends that are general managers trying to figure out where Kenny was going to get drafted. Neither Peyton nor Kenny liked what they heard, so he came back for another season, try to help win a title with the Panthers in the ACC. Vanacanda straight ahead on first down and 10, picks up about three. Pretty good advisor to have, and one Peyton Manning. I thought just the way Kenny Pickett went through the process, whether it was Peyton Manning, his coaching staff, listening to other scouts, his father very much involved. He had a senior bowl invite, turned it down to come back to try to maximize on this super senior season. We're seeing a skill on display here on this drive. Second down and seven. Abana Kanda in trouble, cut down in the backfield at the 11-yard line by Jeremy Banks. Banks a downhill linebacker. Coming off the edge, nowhere for Bannikanda to go. We've seen this Tennessee ball front change the line of scrimmage quite a bit here in this first quarter. One quarter in the books here in Knoxville. And it's been all balls. 10-0 Tennessee after one. Watching the SEC on ESPN from Rocky Top. Beautiful day in Knoxville. We welcome you back to ESPN College Football presented by Marathon. Tennessee up 10 0 against the Pitt Panthers. But Pitt with its best drive of the day, and quarterback Kenny Pickett, four for four, throwing in this possession. Third down and 10 at the 11 yard line. They watch the fade to the big tight end. They wanted to get him single coverage here in the boundary. Size mismatch. Pickett was looking that way. Now he's in trouble. Flushed out of the pocket. And Pickett throws back across the middle. And it's a touchdown. Pulled in by Melkis Stovall. And the Panthers are on the board. Well, it's an outstanding individual effort here by Kenny Pickett. They took away the one-on-one -on -one he wanted to go to in the boundary, and then he just does what Kenny Pickett does. Uses the athleticism, gets outside the pocket, allows his wide receiver to come open, and fires a strike on the move to Stowball. Great big pit touchdown to start this second quarter. Sam Skarton on for the point after. A perfect possession for Pickett going five for five, and it's 10-7. Pickett from Oakhurst, New Jersey. Missed a couple of games last year because of an ankle injury. Missed 26 days after that tightrope surgery. Same thing to Tua Tonga by Loa hat. We talked about his relationship with Peyton Manning. They got close when he attended the Manning camp. He's making his 38th career start today. Plenty of experience. One of the more underrated quarterbacks in college football. And he's second in total offense behind Alex Van Pelt, who's now the offensive coordinator of the Browns. And he's closing in on passing Dan Marino for number two on the all-time passing list at Pitt. 
I just like the thought process that he went through to make the decision, guys. He listened to the right people, to the right information, eliminated his ego from the decision-making process, and I think it's going to pay off for him. No question, Tom. And as Mark Whipple told us yesterday, once he made his decision, he's all in and never waffled, never wavered. He's a leader of this football team. The coaches love him. The players love him. Got to have a chance to be a pit. Hall of Famer, and I'm with you, Tom. I think he's got an opportunity to really increase his value as it relates to the NFL draft. And there's Coach Whipple there talking with Kenny Pickett. The other thing, Pat Narduzzi just shook his head and said, Look, I, I thought there was no shot he was coming back. I thought he was gone. It's going to be a touchback. Tennessee will start on the 25. Let's check in with Matt. Guys, Oregon capped off a 99-yard drive. Their first 99-yard drive since 2018. C.J. Verdell, untouched. Oregon up on the Buckeyes in the second quarter, 7 nothing. How about that? Impressive start for the Ducks on the road in the shoe. They got the weight of the whole conference on their shoulders, boys. No question. That was not a good week to be in the Pac-12 last week. I mean, UCLA, great win, but the rest of the league did not look good at all. And then with the injury to Thibodeau, you just wondered, would Oregon even have a chance at the shoe? But off to a good start. And speaking of teams trying to prop up their conference, a rough start for the ACC pit here, looking to make a statement against an SEC opponent. Going to keep it on the ground here with Small trying to pick a hole and he can't. Got tripped up at the point of attack by Chase Pine. Deslin Alexander was in there as well. Gain of two. Tennessee again going up tempo. Small straight ahead. Just got the 29 and that's it. Gain of two. Third down coming up. And this is precisely where Randy Bates defensive coordinator Pat Narduzzi want to be. Stop out first and second. Get them in third and six plus. And this is an area Randy Bates loves to dial up pressure and try to get the football out of Milton's hand quickly. Milton's had four overthrows on deep balls. Let's see what he can do here on third down and six. See six bodies around the line of scrimmage. A lot of times for Randy Bates on third down. Tennessee bringing Fant in here for some protection measures. Milton with time again throwing it downfield and again he overthrows the receiver but a flag is down there is contact Devonshire in coverage against the intended target Javante Payton MJ Devonshire transfer from Kentucky going to get called here for interference it would appear Unless there was a push off by Tennessee. That's interference. Number nine, defense. 15 yard penalty and an automatic. First down. All that on Brandon Hill. Let's see where Hill is in the play. Correction. Okay, they changed. The interference was yeah. on number 12. Devonshire, there you go. Definitely looked like he had a hold of that right arm pulling him back. Javante Payton with a step. Devonshire trying to hold on. I think that's the right call by the official. Not a lot of contact there, but you can't grab the arm of the receiver once he beats you in coverage. I'm going to hand it off here, and again, no running room. Jalen Wright, true freshman, tackled in the backfield by Wendell Davis. So that run defense for Pitt started to get it going here. They were among the nation's leaders in sacks and tackles for a loss a year ago. Aggressive, penetrating front. Good job setting the edge by Deslin Alexander. Three yard loss. Milton going to take off here. Huge running lane. First down and more for Milton. There he goes at the 30. They won't catch him until the last second. They trip him up inside the five yard line. Brandon Hill saves a touchdown. It's a 54 yard run. We'll see Milton. the linebacker come off the edge. It opens up a lot of space and green grass for Joe Milton to pick him up and put him down. You saw the pressure by Randy Bates. He guessed wrong, and the quarterback run game worked to perfection. Wright gets the carry here, stuffed at the three. So a gain of two. Mathis with the hit, second and goal. Tell you, if he brings that pressure, Dusty, in the B gap, they've got him dead to right. It's just the wrong call at the wrong time. No question, Tom. Well done. Perfect play call by Josh Heupel. Yep. Nice job by Joe Milton showing you the athleticism. And movement on the left side of the line by Tennessee. Darnell Wright, the left tackle. Came out of a stance. Full start. Number 58. Offense. Five yard penalty. 
second down. The second and goal from the eight. Another great day of college football on the family of networks ABC Iowa Iowa State at 430 Texas Arkansas ESPN Prime Washington Michigan on ABC at 8. Field shrinks down here tight window throws. This is kind of what we talked about Tom can Joe Milton make these throws when the windows get tighter field shrinks. Second and goal from the eight Milton looking for a running lane it's not there this time. Maybe a gain of one and did the ball come out a late flag comes soaring in. After the play is over, personal foul, unnecessary runners number 68 offense. 15 yards, down counts, third down. So they call that on the right tackle, Cade Mays. Must have been unhappy about the way Milton got tackled I'm guessing and so Tennessee its own worst enemy on this possession they had first and goal at the five now they're back at the twenty two self inflicted wounds see Cade Mays trying to clean up off the pile ten years ago some people say that's good football now that's a penalty we got another stop at the play. Welcome back to Knoxville. It is time for our half our trivia question. So Johnny Majors, this is the Johnny Majors Classic, coached at both schools, played at Tennessee, and was the runner-up to whom for the Heisman Trophy back in 1956? Do you know the answer? I'm typically pretty good at these. I don't know. That's a tough one, man. I don't know. <laughs> I was born in 83, 56, a little bit before my time. I think conservative play call here, Tom. I don't think you put the ball in harm's way down the field. I don't either. I don't know if they trust Joe Milton enough to do that right now. Get points and get your defense back on the field. Milton taking a shot, single coverage. Black shoulder throw incomplete. There was contact. They might call this against Cedric Tillman for pushing off on Mathis. They are, Dave. So much for not trusting him. They let him go right to Cedric Tillman in the end zone once again. And clearly, Tillman pushed off. It's going to be against the offense. And this may back him up on the fringe of being out of field goal. Right. Range. Now you're back up to the, you know, outside the 30 yard line. Looking at. Pass interference. Offense. 15 yard penalty. Third down. And you're 55 yarder right now. And you think about where you were after the 54 yard run. <laughs> By Milton inside the five first and goal you get down to the two and now here you are backed up third and thirty seven from the thirty seven seventh penalty already for this volunteer football team and clearly a penalty for pushing off there so third and goal from the thirty seven you don't see this very often Milton with a swing pass small and pushed out at the 30 so that does get them back into Chase McGrath's range his career long is 52 which he made at USC so be about a 47 or 48 yarder here try to get something out of this possession and if they're unable to convert this field goal what a win that is for Randy Bates and his defense after giving up the big chunk run if they can come away with this no points given up. A massive bounce back. 48 yard attempt officially here for Chase McGrath. And it's good. We talked about the confidence they have in this USC transfer. McGrath delivers again. ESPN College Football presented by Marathon is brought to you by Barbecue Guys for those who were born to grill and Goodyear discover the possibilities Goodyear more driven legendary coach Johnny Majors won the national title at Pitt one of two stints as the head coach of the Panthers and then coached 16 years at Tennessee where 
He was a great player inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame as a player in 1987. Majors passed away June of 2020 at the age of 85. Part one of the Johnny Majors Classic they will play at Heinz Field next year. Dave after a couple of poor return decisions Pitts changed up their return man here. Hopefully maybe get a little fair catch and get some field position. Yes yeah, Stovall is deep. Barton was the deep man in the first quarter. It'll be fair caught so Pitt will start at the 25 yard line. All right let's answer the Aflac trivia question. And it is regarding Johnny Majors. Aflac. Who finished second in Heisman Trophy voting in 56. Who won the award. Got a small hit, but I'll take a little bit of credit. I'm going to go from Notre Dame, Paul Horning, for the win. You got it. Notre Dame was two and eight that year. Ooh. The late Paul Horning still won the Heisman Trophy that season ahead of Majors. We wouldn't uh, see that today, would we, Tom? Uh, negative. <laughs> negative, Ghost Rider. The pattern is <laughs> full. That's right. When's the last time a guy with a losing record won the Heisman? Maybe him. For a Great serious trivia question. question. Or had a had a, a win percentage of 25 percent and won the Heisman. Kenny Pickett, five for five on the last drive, going to the air again here, looking downfield and wide open is Mack in the Tennessee territory. So Pickett has completed his last six throws. That's a gain of 31 yards to the pit or the Tennessee 44. Boy, Pickett is in rhythm. Excellent protection all day to survey the field. And Taser Mack runs away from the coverage of Trayvon Flowers. Well executed by the senior. One super senior to another. Pickett to Mack. Another pass play. Sideline throw is caught at the 40. And this is going to be a gain of about three or four. Let's check him with Matt Berry in the studio. Another SEC East team on the ropes early on. South Carolina getting beat by Holt Naylor's in East Carolina. Right now, this one 14 nothing early in the second quarter. Meanwhile, the SEC East team here in Knoxville with the lead 13 7. Abana Kanda up the gut. Maybe one stuffed at the 39. Third down coming up. Well, Kenny Pickett is in a rhythm right now. Has completed his last seven straight passes. Now that last possession was perfect on third down. Love to get him on the move outside the pocket. It's almost where he's at his most comfortable. One of his favorite targets. Right here in the slot, Addison. Maybe Ford on territory. Third and four at the Tennessee 39. And Pickett has another strong throw and then a suplex as Addison is dumped by Jeremy Banks and a flag down. A little extracurricular activity following the whistle, starting with Jeremy Banks. Kind of Tennessee is self imploding here, Dave, in the second the, quarter. All the penalties and dumb penalties by Tennessee. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 33 defense. After this is to the goal, automatic Eighth penalty, 95 penalty yards already. The fans letting them have it too, guys. It, you know, there's been a lot of frustration amongst Balls fans over the last several years because of plays like that. Self-inflicted wounds, poor head play, and they're just tired of it got to be smarter in that situation if you're Jeremy Banks they can't stop Kenny Pickett right now no need to give him extra help first down and 16 pick it off play action this might be a double pass it is Krull is open it's a touchdown Jared Wayne with the pass Krull pulls it in and Pitt has tied the game Well, it was a flat start for Pitt coming in here to Rocky Top. And it's been all Pitt, the late part of the first, and here in the second quarter, a little trickeration. The double pass works to perfection as the big target tight end, Lucas Crawl, walks into the end zone. Scarting on to give the Panthers the lead. Crawl, grad transfer from Florida, also played at Arkansas as a baseball player. On his third SEC school, and the big tight end gives Pitt the one point lead. Jared Wayne with an excellent pass here to the open crawl for six.
kick off your week one NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern time with the countdown crew on ESPN and the app. Patrick Mahomes sitting down with former teammate Alex Smith. An inside look at what could be Aaron Rodgers' last dance in Green Bay. Could be, might be understating it. <laughs> Probably. Some it's bad feelings between player and front office there. Ben Saul's booting it deep. This will be a touchback. Tennessee will start on the 25, trailing for the first time today. Let's take a look at the double pass here and how Lucas Kroll got so wide open. As you'll see, the screen that comes down to Jared Wayne, safety going to safety going to come down, and you'll see the tight end come wide open on the corner route. Screen pass comes. Trayvon Flowers bites. Center field safety can't get over, and an easy touch in. Touchdown for the tight end, Lucas Kroll. Well executed by Pitt, dialing up at the perfect time. And then an offside on Tennessee. Another penalty. Uh, check that on Pitt, excuse me. On Pitt on the kickoff, and Tennessee gets extra five yards, and we'll start this drive on the 30. See if some of this offensive Pitt momentum carries over to the defensive side of the football. This is a really big offensive drive for Tennessee. Huge. Totally with you, Tom. Momentum is completely swung the other direction. You know, Milton 7 of 12 only 49 yards passing off play action gets drilled and sacked inside the 20 yard line. Keyshawn Camp comes away with the ball but they rule that Milton was down on the play. Well Keyshawn Camp working on the back up there 78 Ollie Lane bull rushes him. Whoa, I, I don't know that that wasn't a fumble. I think I think Pitt should challenge that. Now they made, the football. I think they just changed the call on the field and gave Pitt the ball because it did look like Camp jarred that ball free and ripped it away from Milton. You saw the power from Camp. Going on the field, a very fumble recovered by the defense is under further review. But they did change the ruling on the field, which is extremely important. It's going to be Pitt ball in the red zone. Well, the call on the field is going to stand. Outstanding individual effort by Keyshawn Camp. He runs through the offensive guard, Ollie Lane, and then as he's taking Milton to the ground, rips the ball loose and puts Pitt in business in the red zone. They've scored 14 unanswered points. Davis, though, is drilled by Matthew Butler, captain of the Tennessee defense for a one-yard loss. So that's a big play by Butler in quick change. But how about Camp, a guy that has battled injury so much over the course of his pit career, had two seasons cut short because of injury. A big takeaway for the Panthers. Play action here for Pickett. Back shoulder throw is off target, intended for Mack. It'll be third down and 11. What a huge opportunity, Dusty, here for this Tennessee defense. They need this crowd, and they need to force a field goal. No question, this is really where Kenny Pickett has thrived so far today. Almost flawless on third down. He's six for six on third down. Yeah, and that last pass was only a second incompletion of the ball game. This is huge here for Tennessee. Massive. Third and 11, Pickett with time short. Throw is incomplete. Davis, the intended receiver, but Aaron Beasley showing incredible makeup speed. He was on him as soon as the ball got there. Outstanding break on the football. No chance, even if that pass is caught, to get much past the line of scrimmage. Nice job by Tim Banks' defense after a couple of possessions where Pittsburgh and Kenny Pickett made it look easy. Backed up in the red zone. This Tennessee defense bows its neck and gets a stop. And Pitt has a new kicker this year, Sam Scarton. It's only his second attempt of the season. Made a 35-yarder last week. This from 38, and it is good. Just sneaks in there to make it 17-13. Pitt, Scarton replacing a four-year kicker and Alex Kessman, and so Pitt gets three points after that great play by Kent. Well, the 56, a uh, 52nd season, excuse me, of Monday Night Football starts. Monday, Ravens Raiders with Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Lewis Riddick, Lisa Salters. Special edition of Monday Night Countdown kicks off our coverage at 6 on ESPN. Don't forget, you got the Mannings, Paige, and Eli over on ESPN, too.
spent a lot of time in the Tennessee facility yesterday and everywhere you turn there's a shrine to the great Peyton Manning who as we talked about earlier in case you're just joining us now he's done such a good job Dusty of building relationships with the young quarterbacks he and yeah. Eli with the, the Manning camps and Kenny Pickett Peyton's become Pickett's mentor and has had a big impact on his life he texted Pickett yesterday and, and told him man I wish I could come to the game but obviously uh, he's got uh, work to do on Monday he's got night with Eli. Now. He's got a job. No question. The impact he's had on so many quarterbacks and really this Tennessee program has been outstanding. Bayless Jones. Transfer from USC trying to get the corner and well played by the Panthers. Jones still going though out to the 22. Let's go to Matt in the studio. All right guys Ohio State has answered. Oregon was looking at the wristbands to get the play in. C.J. Stroud takes advantage to Garrett Wilson. 27 yards, all tied at seven. Bit of a dogfight there in the shoe today. Ohio State answering back. See what this offensive possession looks like. Joe yeah. Milton out of the game. Yeah, Hendon Hooker in now. Joe Milton on that sack fumble. He knocked knees with Keyshawn Camp right in the shin. They're taking a look at him on the sidelines. We've got the Virginia Tech transfer now. All right, Luke, thank you. Yeah, and he's got a lot of experience as a starter. Went eight and seven at Tennessee. And a, maybe a broken play. Hard to tell. Jalen Wright and Hooker kind of ran into each other. And it's a loss of about three. Elijah Canty with great penetration on the inside. He's got two years of eligibility left. 22 touchdowns, only seven picks as a starter at Virginia Tech. Rolling to his left here, being chased, and the ball is batted down by Alexander. It'll be third down at 13. Boy, it took a while for the officials there to rule it incomplete, but clearly the ball was thrown and knocked down. On this pit front, they are alive and they are humming. You see Deslin Alexander outside disrupting that attempted throw by Hendon Hooker. This Tennessee Vol offense on its heels. This is exactly where Randy Bates's defense wants to be. Third and long, pin their ears back and come after the quarterback. Now, Tennessee coaches spent a lot of time with us talking about how the team believes in Joe Milton. We'll see if they believe in Hendon Hooker. Trying to make a play here on third and long. Instead, he gets hit. Ball comes out, but the hand was going forward. It's an incomplete pass. Servassier Dennis, who told us yesterday he could have played quarterback at Syracuse, that's where he's from, but he said, I want to play defense. And he went to Tennessee, or to Pitt rather, and he's making plays here today in Tennessee. Well, and you see Servassier Dennis, it's kind of a delayed blitz. He waits, it opens up, and then he pulls the trigger and gets the big hit on the quarterback on third and long. I love a high school quarterback telling me, I don't want to play quarterback, I want to play defense. He said he wanted to get his anger out and hit people. Big hit on Hinden Hooker there. Was an excellent lacrosse player in high school. So a three and out for Tennessee. And not a good punt. Fielded on the run. And out of bounds in Tennessee territory is Stovall. So Pitt will have excellent starting field position. That's the big difference so far between the first and second quarters. Bad field position to start the game. Excellent field position in quarter number two as we look at our Wendy's weekend wake up brought to you by Wendy's breakfast. We talked about Iowa Iowa State the other game I'm interested in Texas at Arkansas. Tom I don't know how much you saw but I thought Hudson Card in his debut against Louisiana looked poised and primed to lead that Sark offense. I think that's an interesting matchup in Fayetteville today. It's going to be really fun to watch that Texas offense when they start recruiting some open field skilled players. You know, the receivers are a little different now than I think what Sark would want. And if he starts to get some of those guys, look out. That ain't in Colorado game interesting, too. Pickett with a ton of time, but everybody covered. So Pickett takes off, throws to the sideline, and it's incomplete. Unable to hang on to it that time with Shockey Jacques Louis. Second down and 10. Midway through the second quarter, it was 13 0 Tennessee, but Pitt has scored 17 points straight. Really well covered down the field. Kenny Pickett wanted to go back across the field and find Taser Mack on the deep over. It's well picked up by Jalen McCullough. Nowhere for Kenny Pickett to go with the ball on first down. Delayed handoff. 
And Small tripped up by a defender who was on the ground, Roman Harrison. So it's a short game. Third down and about seven coming up. Another huge third down for the Tennessee defense. And Dusty, isn't this where Kenny Pickett gives you such an advantage? You're on the road, big crowd, it's loud, you're a sixth year senior, and you've handled third down masterfully. Addison, the go to guy for Kenny Pickett. On third down and six, delayed blitz. Pickett's pass is caught by a Banacanda for a first down inside the 35. Pushed out, wrestled by Page out of bounds after a 14 yard pickup. Too much cushion on the outside. The receiver splits out as they go empty. Unaccounted for on the near sideline. And as Kenny Pickett does, works through his progressions and gets the ball to the open man. Been brilliant on third down so far in this ball game. Abana Kanda off the right edge gets two yards tackled by Alante Taylor. The guys check out what offensive coordinator Mark Whipple does here. You're going to see Kenny Pickett at quarterback. He walks about halfway and Mark Whipple actually gives him the play. He talks to him between each and every play. You don't have three or four reserve quarterbacks you know giving in signals. He's physically telling him every now and then he gives him a nice little nugget on what he might want to look for. Third year for Mark Whipple as the offensive coordinator. Pickett surveying the field. Receiver comes open. Caught inside the 20 yard line by Jared Wayne, who had a touchdown pass earlier in the game. First down pit. This is NFL pocket presence from Kenny Pickett. Starts to his right, not there, comes back to his left and back to the middle field. His third option as he locates Wayne for another first down. And a gain of 15. Pick it on pace for well over 300 yards passing in this ball game. Abana Kanda straight ahead, down to the 10 yard line for three yards. Abana Kanda been the lead running back so far here early for Pitt. Like what the sophomore brings to the table. He's got excellent speed, but as you mentioned earlier, added some weight and can really bang it in between the tackles for this run game. Right, went from 185 to 215 since enrolling. Give it to him again between the tackles. Keeps the feet driving down to the five. He'll come up a yard or two short of the line to gain. Five minutes to go here in the second quarter. Four point pit lead. Empty set, going to be a quarterback run, but Pickett is gobbled up in the backfield by Tyler Barron. It's a loss of four or five on the play, and it forces the Panthers to try a field goal. Well, they want to go Q draw, and it's Tyler Barron scot free. Nobody accounts for him. That B gap opens up as the guard goes down. The tackle should have come down and squeezed it off, and it's Tyler Barron with a good get off and a huge play to get him off the field on third down. They're without their best pass rusher, Byron Young. They're, he's going through the eligibility process, so he's missing his second straight game. But Barron has stepped up here again today. 27 yard field goal try. And Scarton puts it through, and Pitt extends the lead to seven. But man, two straight possessions starting in plus territory, and Tennessee only surrenders a pair of field goals. Tim Bakes got to be happy about the defense responding and finding a way to come up with key stops. Don't forget following our game it's the U.S. Open Women's Championship match with an all team final British 18 year old Emma Radakanu, the first qualifier ever to reach a Grand Slam final Canadian phenom Leila Fernandez who just turned 19. First women's final between unseated players in the open era. And the last teenage women's final was at the 1999 U.S. Open. Serena Williams was 17, and she beat 18-year-old Martina Hingis that day. See if Tennessee can get some points going into the locker room. It's a great response by Pitt after getting down early, a block punt. Tennessee turned into a touchdown. They knocked the quarterback out. We'll see if Milton returns after this kickoff or if it's Hendon Hooker again at quarterback. 
They passed Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganville on a spectacular day here in Knoxville. Temperature around 80 degrees. Here's Bayless Jones at the five yard line. And he finds some running room out past the 30. Pinballs forward. And then finally stacked up. Here's Matt. Guys, checking in Ohio State, Oregon. Here come the Ducks. CJ Verdell again with the touchdown. Oregon is up 14 7 in that one. Coming up on the Lexus halftime report, Jesse and Joey will break down what they're seeing early on in Ohio State, Oregon. Plus, could be a rough afternoon with South Carolina and the SEC East. They're down to East Carolina, plus Auburn in action. Some good highlights out of there. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway joining me coming up on the Lexus halftime report. How about the Oregon Ducks mm. in Columbus? I don't think there was anybody in America that does our job that picked Oregon in this game. I, I don't know if anyone. I thought it was going to be one side of the other way. Credit to Mario Cristobal getting his team ready for a tough road trip. And again, Hooker in the game at quarterback. They run it. Jabari Small doesn't get much there. Maybe two or three out to the 35. Tennessee has all of its timeouts. Three and a half to go. Tennessee's really struggled today on first down. And Hooker going to take off here. Bounces off of a defender and lunges forward for a gain of two or three. Let's get the latest on Joe Milton. Here's Tom. Well, they are looking at his lower left extremity. They've taken him into the locker room, and it does not look good. They don't have confirmation yet, so it looks like we will see Hendon's Hooker for the foreseeable future today. Oh, boy, it's too bad Milton had that hand injury last year that he played through and that nobody talked about it was kept very quiet until the surgery in the offseason it might be hookers show the rest of this game and maybe longer grad transfer from Virginia Tech smart to take your time here third and long situation don't want to get that defense right back on the field he'll throw it here on third down stands in the pocket long throw is caught by Tillman making defenders miss and they finally stop his forward progress at the 44 yard line. But great job after the catch. Love the extra effort at the end of this play. Nice route by Cedric Tillman working back to the football, working back to his quarterback, and refusing to go down for a much needed Tennessee first down. Boy, do they ever need that. They're in pit territory. Out in space down the sideline is Callaway breaking free inside the 10. Touchdown, Tennessee. Well, Cedric Tillman after making the big catch he's the blocker out in front and it's a missed tackle on the perimeter and the speed on the sidelines by Callaway got a chance to lock this thing up at 20. A former high school quarterback just looking here to make sure he stayed in bounds and it appeared that he did but just played special teams last year out last week because of a lower body injury but a huge play there and did you see Tillman too. Absolutely. Great job not to get the offensive pass in out there in space. Tillman so wide, tall, 6'3. I mean, the pit couldn't get around him. Extra point ties the game. No question. Big play is what this offense typically creates. We haven't seen many here today. A.J. Woods misses. Phil Campbell can't get him down. And it's Jimmy Callaway taking it to the end zone. Injecting some more life back into the stadium and into this ball football team. They kind of hit a lull there for a little bit, yes. partner. Yep. I think you got to credit the defense. Backed up. Pitt had the ball in plus territory. Back to back possessions. They forced a couple of field goals. And then Hendon Hooker converts on a big third down. And you see the speed of Jimmy Callaway, Luke. He can yep. fly. He can. And, and listen, Tennessee's got weapons. And you know, it's interesting just watching the replays of that, seeing the set design, those wide splits that we've talked about today, and how they're going to count the numbers in the box. They had it. They had a loaded box. They couldn't block it in the run game. Okay, we're going to throw it out to the perimeter, let our skill guys do the rest. It has two timeouts remaining. They have a red hot quarterback and Kenny Pickett. We'll see what the Panthers can do after Callaway ties the game. Stowball is deep. 
Toby Wilson to boot it. In the field of play, but a fair catch signal means it's a touchback and will start on the pit 25. Take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Allstate. ESPN 2, number 2 Georgia, which made a huge jump this week after the big win against Clemson, taking on UAB. I'm intrigued to see how Clemson responds. I mean, that Georgia defense was stifling, but you'd expect DJ Uyunglele to step up. Obviously, the Cyhawk trophy will be, that battle will be on in Ames later today. And even Oklahoma, we were last week. Uninspired performance by Spencer Rattler against Western Carolina. You would expect a bounce back position for them and for the team. And as you mentioned for Clemson, I, I wouldn't want to be South Carolina State. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, man. Two minute offense here, opportunity for Kenny Pickett before halftime. That Tennessee defense fired up. They rush four. Pitt runs the ball. And a good cut by Vincent Davis. Gets to the 30 yard line. We near two minutes to go. No, Dusty, we're in a two minute here, and we, we, we talk about Kenny Pickett. These are the things the NFL is going to study with him. The red zone's been great. The third down's been great. How about a two minute? Mm -hmm. He'll throw it here. In trouble. Gets out of there, and Pickett takes off. Picks up the first down, gets a couple of extra yards before he scoots out. Crossing the 40 yard line. Clock stop with a minute 44 to go. It was an excellent job by the running back, Vincent Davis. Watch him here on the blitz pickup. As he takes Banks' feet out from underneath him, allows Pickett to get outside, utilizes athleticism, and pick up the first down. Pickett back to throw. Everybody covered again. Pickett leaving the pocket again. Dangerous throw, but it is caught, and they're going to say it was trapped. Incomplete. Addison caught it off the turf, but we saw him do that on a touchdown pass earlier. That's dangerous in the middle of the field there, throwing it back, but let's see if Addison got his hands under it. Ooh. That's close. I mean, that's extremely close. Is it enough to overturn? I mean, they might look at it further, but I don't know if you can overturn it. But man, that was very close. Well done by Addison trying to get his hands between the ground and that football. No doubt. And you're not going to look at this further, though. Pick it on second down and ten. A flag is down. Movement by the Panthers. First start, number 57, offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. It's Gabe Hoy, the right tackle. Pitt won the Coastal Division in 2018, the first trip to the ACC title game. There's no question with Pat Narduzzi, they're headed in the right direction. Three times they've gone eight and five, and they think with Kenny Pickett at the helm, even though they lost two All-America pass rushers, they feel pretty good about their defense and their chances of competing for the ACC championship. But not going to be an easy out here today in Knoxville, although some people thought that that would be the case. With all the players Tennessee lost, the transfer portal, and all the issues with the program that Josh Heupel's trying to clean up. With a couple of seconds back on the clock. Now we got another official stoppage. Trying to get the clock correct. Because it was an incomplete pass. Pick it. Everybody covered again. Pick it, leaving the pocket again. He's going to tuck it, head for the hills, and out of bounds. At the 42, so a pickup of five got back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and long. Well, you called it out, partner. Nowhere for Kenny Pickett to distribute the football down the field. Excellent coverage across the board by the secondary for Tennessee. Third down. Talked a lot about this down so far. Kenny Pickett 
has been masterful here in this first half. Seven of seven, 60 yards and a touchdown pass. On third and ten, Pickett looking middle of the field. It's pulled in for a first down by Mack. Excellent throw by Pickett inside the Tennessee 40 yard line. What well, starts with the protection, and how about Taser Mack with an excellent in cutting route? McCullough playing off of him as soon as Mack puts his foot in the ground, cuts inside, balls on him. Well done by Kenny Pickett on third down once again. Yep, gain of 20. Pickett will throw it again. Pressure from Tennessee. Pickett gets rid of it. And it's a jump ball that Mack got at the 11-yard line. What a catch by Taysier Mack with Burrell wrapped all over him, 27 yards. That's trust between a quarterback and a wide receiver. Excellent coverage down the field by Burrell. And you see the adjustment in air, back shoulder throw. Extremely well executed by Kenny Pickett and Taysier Mack. Uh, if you weren't impressed with Kenny Pickett coming into this game, you got to be after this first half. He's been money. Timeout, Tennessee. Their first of the half. 30 second timeout. So 48 seconds left. First down at the 11 yard line of Tennessee. Coming up on ABC at 4.30, it's Iowa, Iowa State. Should be a great game. It was a great scene in Ames for college game day today. And then coming up from the big house, our Saturday night game, it is Michigan and Washington. Well, Ashton Kutcher likes the Hawkeyes, so does Coach Corso. Come with the Cyclones. What about you? I think, look, Matt Campbell to me is one of the best coaches in the country. I agree. And I think Brock Purdy's excellent. I think Iowa State's the better team. Got to get Brees State Hall wins. going. Got to get Brees Hall going today. And a couple of names: Charlie Kolar, Chase Allen, two big tight ends, could play a key role as not just blockers but pass catchers as they fight for the Cyhawk Trophy. Here we got a tie game late in the first half with 48 seconds to go. Kenny Pickett has been sensational so far, throwing for a buck 91. Long pass out in the flat. It's Davis. And Davis is ripped to the ground inside the five yard line. Pitt still has a couple of timeouts left. They're not going to use one here, or will they? No, nope, they're letting the clock tick down to 32. And now we have a stoppage. No signal yet as to who called timeout, though. Big discussion going on between Pat Narduzzi and the officials. So you got Mark Whipple in there, former head coach at UMass, assistant in the NFL. Chosen not to accept a 10 second runoff with a defensive player's helmet coming off. Okay, so there was a defensive player's helmet that came off there, and, and they were trying to sort that out. Second down and two. They can get a first down without getting into the end zone. Ball on the three yard line. Play action for Pickett. Dumps the pass off. And good job by Tennessee as Wayne is picked up and dropped. And another flag. That's the second time that Tennessee has done that. If you got to stop. And the whistle blows. What are you doing? Theo Jackson, the guilty man this time. It was Jeremy Banks earlier. And Theo Jackson plays that perfectly up until the body slam at the end of the play. Jeremy Banks already been called for this once today. Theo Jackson got to be smarter in that moment. I know that have to be. When you stop playing in the NFL, you were recruited to play professional, to be a professional wrestler. Okay, so they actually said no foul. I'd love to see another look at that because it was still after the whistle. He's just driving his legs. That went a little bit different to me. It's a penalty. Than the body slam. I, that's the same thing to me. Though. How's that not a penalty? I mean, it's no different. If you're going to call the one on Banks, why aren't you calling that one? Agree to disagree, but. I thought it should have been a 
15 yarder which would have given Pitt an automatic first down now Tennessee trying to call timeout here. Prior to the snap timeout Tennessee their second of the half 30 second timeout. I'll just say I thought that the Jeremy Banks first one he picked him up and body slammed him whereas I felt that was in in the flow of the tackle right Theo Jackson is engaged he's driving his hips and he's trying to drive into the ground whereas it felt to me like Banks had him wrapped up kind of suplexed him and threw him to the ground a little bit different as I'm showing you some wrestling moves well, again I, I know you were <laughs> recruited to, to be a professional wrestler after your NFL days were over so, so you would know what about Tennessee though and the way the volunteers overall I know the penalties have been a problem but we weren't sure what we were going to see today it's year one of the Josh Heupel era a lot of players have left the program if you're a Tennessee fan you gotta be happy so far right? no question I mean especially just the way this team was locked in ready to go special teams has been outstanding so far today obviously Josh Heupel has got a lot to clean up they've only got 71 scholarship players and so far through this first half you can tell a team that's ready to play and ready to fight. And they got a fullback in here this time. So it's time out for an injured player. So now we got an injured player timeout. It's Tyler Barron who made a big play earlier. Boy, that happened as Tennessee was getting lined up, it looked like. It's not an injury they can afford either. He's their best Ooh. pass rusher. Oh, man. You just hope that's a cramp right I mean with the, the heat and humidity you hope that's all that is there. I don't like where he's grabbing. Just odd because he didn't really move no. before that happened. Already made a big play on third down. Around the goal line earlier in this half three tackles two for loss here so far. You're the most talented of these defensive linemen for Tennessee best pass rusher. Hope that he's OK I did not like the way that looked. When he went down, Dave. Pitt brought a fullback, Jake Zelinskis, in the game there. First time we've seen a fullback in there for Pitt. And an extra tight end as well. Grant Kerrigan was in there. Let's see if they stick with that formation here. It's third down and two on three. And Barron up and trying to walk it off. Hopefully, okay. Tom how big is this third and two here. I mean this would just be massive. This would be absolutely huge. I mean that would be three consecutive series where Tennessee's defense did not allow a touchdown was able to force three and get the offense back in rhythm as we saw on the last series and I really like what Josh Heifel's done here where he's used his timeouts making sure he's got the right personnel on the field defensively Heifel's walking right down now to the official he might call another one here in a well, second. Tennessee Tom had 10 guys on the field they had to run an 11th on late. They go out of the eye and they run it on third down and two they get the first down and they get the touchdown Vincent Davis hits pay dirt for the Panthers. With 19 seconds left. Meanwhile Grant Kerrigan injured for Pitt but Vincent Davis junior from Fort Lauderdale Florida gives the Panthers the lead. Good physical running by Vincent Davis just kind of patiently waits tries to allow it to open up and then he gets into the scrum leans forward and gets into the end zone to cap off a very good two minute drive for Pitt. I'll tell you Dusty it's interesting because you look at Pitt and you look at how big and physical they are on the offensive line and it's really surprising that they're not a more successful running football team. They've struggled to run the football and Kenny Pickett can run and, and, and he makes his own plays but when you look at a lot of red shirt seniors fifth year sixth year seniors and they're a very very average running football team so good play call there and good push up front. No doubt push off the left side and as you know this is a very veteran very experienced team. For Pat Narduzzi, 14 super seniors. I think it's why we saw them in such good spirits, so confident yesterday. You know they got a good team. So they're reviewing this to make sure he got in. Go, going back to the flag being picked up on the body slam, my whole point is if you're Tennessee, 
don't even put yourself in that position. Right. With the with going after the whistle like that, you're just asking for it. You're not wrong in that regard. <laughs> I did agree with the call on the field. And ultimately, it didn't matter, Pitt. Right. The touchdown. Again, this is, uh, there was a penalty called against Jeremy Banks earlier. And you, you see Jackson there. And to me, again, it's the same thing. It, I don't see a difference. I know our rules expert, Matt Austin, would probably agree with you. Subjective, I guess, to a certain degree. But yes, Matt Austin reached out to us and said they are different. The first one more of a real body slam, that one a little bit more in the play. I'd like to see the defender not, not land and drive into the runner as he goes to the ground. But I'll text John Cena at halftime, see what <laughs> he says. Perfect. You know, I think the other thing, guys, that, that draws attention to it is there's not a drill, there's not a period, there's not a single thing that's ever coached to tackle in that way shape or form right. Yep. That's right. So you're beginning the act of the tackle but that's not how you're taught to end the tackle and it, 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 so it draws attention. Yeah. Meanwhile Tom they're, they're still looking at it but you can't see the ball when you can't see the ball on the replay it's almost impossible to overturn the ruling in the field of a touchdown. You couldn't even see Vincent Davis much less the ball on the replay that at least we just showed you right there. Have to imagine the call on the field is going to stand here Dave. After further review the ruling on the field stands. And again, can't say confirm because you couldn't see the ball. Correct. I think Matt Austin might agree with me on, on that one at least. <laughs> we just want Matt's approval. That's that's really that's all right. we're trying that's to get. That's all we're here. looking for. Dave, no I question. promised in the second half we're going to let you be right at least once. <laughs> and Scarton, there was some contact too at his feet. Made the extra point, make it 27 20. 19 seconds to go. Taco Bell welcomes you to Live Moss Student Section of the Year contest. Use hashtag student section sauce to get the committee's attention and go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. What a sight for sore eyes, man. Almost 100,000 here in Knoxville. One of the great venues in all of college football, legendary Neyland Stadium. We've had a fantastic time here in Knoxville. What a gorgeous campus. We made our way around yesterday. Some fine places to dine and some of the best college football fans in the country. And man, this was missed last year, wasn't it? Oh. It is a sight for sore eyes to see a packed stadium and such passionate fans. Tennessee will get the ball here with 19 seconds left. We'll see how the balls elect to handle it if they trot out Hendon Hooker, the quarterback, or uh, to actually run the offense or just to take a knee and get to halftime. This has been at a very long first half, almost two hours in length. This quarter has, has been like an hour and 15 minutes because that first quarter wasn't that long, and this will be a touchback. It'll start on the 25 here. In case you're just tuning in, Joe Milton, the Tennessee quarterback, got hurt on a play where he was stripped of the football by Keyshawn Camp. He has not returned. Hendon Hooker, grad transfer from Virginia Tech, came in, threw a touchdown pass. That tied the game, but Pitt marched right down the field behind the great quarterback play of Kenny Pickett. And Pitt's been able to overcome a block punt that uh, Tennessee turned into a touchdown after recovering it on the two. And the Panthers with a seven point lead. That's that experience, right? Veteran football team go down 10 0 early, wasn't going their way on the road. They didn't waver, they didn't blink. They just continued to chop wood and really put together a solid first half. They're just going to keep it on the ground here with Small, wrapped up after a gain of maybe one. And a timeout called here, an official timeout, it looks like. The pit sideline was. Pitt sideline was already almost into the tunnel. That's not good, guys. That's Jabari Small went down oh, number two, the tailback. And Tennessee is really thin at running back this week. Yeah, they're they're talking to him on the sideline. He was holding his shoulder when he came off. With under one minute to play in the second half, in the first half. 
10 second runoff rule applies, the half is over. So you go, the 10 second runoff injury player inside a minute to go, so that ends the first half. And they've already lost their quarterback. And remember, Tyon Evans out, not available today. So Jamari, Jamari Small getting the bulk of the carries at running back, and he gets hurt on the last play of the half. Eventful first half, to say the least. Pit by seven as we send you to Matt Berry, Joey Galloway, and Jesse Palmer. Guys, thank you. Lexus Halftime Report. We'll take a two-hour fun half of football to get things started in week two. Starting with a BN College football presented by Marathon. From Knoxville, Tennessee. Rocky Top, you're watching the SEC on ESPN. Tennessee trailing Pitt at halftime. 27-20 in front of about 90,000. Neyland Stadium, Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, Tom Lugan, Bill Pitt, overcoming an early block punt, some mistakes, got down 10 nothing, but showed a lot of toughness and resilience. And, and experience, yeah. and that's what this team is, an experienced football team led by Kenny Pickett, and man, was he fantastic in that first half, leading Pitt back and giving them a touchdown lead going to break. This will be a touchback. Tennessee will start on its 25 as we take a look at today's more driven moment brought to you by Goodyear. As you just talked about, it was a block punt early. Had Neyland Stadium going nuts. An early 10-0 lead, but then it was Kenny Pickett. Poised, making quality plays. Eight of nine in that first half on third down. The double pass touchdown to the big tight end, Kroll. And then a key play here, Keyshawn Camp. Not only gets the sack, cause fumble, but he puts Joe Milton out of the game in the first half. And we'll see if Joe Milton tries to get back on the field here in the second. It's going to be Hendon Hooker, so Milton was out. We saw him jog out of the tunnel and warm up. But they're going to start the second half with Hendon Hooker. Did have a touchdown pass in relief of Milton. Good run off the left side, but the hole closes right. Brought down after just a one-yard gain. Looked like there was a lot of room. Let's check in with Tom. Yeah, and Dave, to add to that injury report, Jabari Small, the running back, is out. So they will no longer have his services. He may try and go, but the coaches don't want him to. Jalen Hyatt, the wide receiver, is out. And then also from Pitt's side of things, talking with Pat Narduzzi, fellas, he simply said, just getting field position back gives us a chance. And then we weathered the first quarter. We didn't fold our chair and want to go home, didn't pout. He was really proud of his kids battling. Meanwhile, an incomplete pass by Hooker. So now you're third and nine. So no Ty and Evans at running back because of a health issue. Jabari Small is now out. The starting quarterback, Joe Milton, is out. Hooker dumps it off to Jalen Wright, the true freshman, gets some blocks. Thrown down, but after he got the first down at the 37-yard line, turned on the Jets after he caught that ball out of the backfield. Just a quick swing screen to the freshman running back, and nine Callaway with a key block to help spring the young running back for a first down. And they were trying to do a direct snap on a player in motion that time, so a little trick play, but everybody was moving. Full start, Full start. offensive line, five-yard penalty, first down. They put Princeton fan in motion, snapped it to him, but penalty and Josh Heupel is like, well, I guess I can't run that ever again. <laughs> you know it's bad when they say full start offensive line. Earned <laughs> <laughs> and moving to his left in trouble, fumbles the ball! And Pitt recovers it inside the 30-yard line. Baldonado chopped it out and got the recovery as well. Well, Baldonado, he's got outstanding length, and they're going to try to move the pocket with Hinden Hooker. Watch him stay outside, set the edge, and not just get the sack, but get the ball loose. Quality job, keeping contained, getting that right hand in, knocks it loose and jumps on top. An outstanding individual effort there by Haba Baldonado. Disastrous start of this second half for Hendon Hooker and the Tennessee Volunteers. You can't be careless with the ball there, Dusty. You can't hold the ball out away from your body. You get around those defenders, you better tuck that thing high and tight. So the Rome Italy native with a huge caused fumble and recovery in less than a minute into the third and Pitt starting in plus territory again. Pick it on the move. Being chased, gets rid of the ball, throwing it away. Jaquan Blakely had the pressure as Pickett had to leave the pocket second down and 10. Pickett wanted to go to his big tight end, Lucas Kroll. Good coverage down the field, allowing the pass rush of Blakely to get there. 
forced the incompletion. Both Pitt and Tennessee won their openers. Pitt beat UMass 51 7 a week ago. Run play off the right side and down goes Vincent Davis. Hawk tied by Banks. No gain. Third down and long coming up. Quick change. Big play defensively for Tennessee. We've seen them in this position a lot here today. And we've seen Kenny Pickett almost flawless on third down. Eight of nine, 80 yards for those going for first downs and one for a touchdown. As Tom pointed out earlier, that conversation between Kenny Pickett and the offensive coordinator, Mark Whipple, Pickett went all the way to the sidelines to get one of those nuggets from his offensive coordinator. Pickett has been brilliant, though, on third down. Let's see what Mark Whipple dials up here in third down and 10 from the 27 of Tennessee. Pressure up the middle, Pickett in trouble and sacked at the 40-yard line by Banks. Maybe out of field goal range, thanks to Banks. Fourth down and long, a loss of 11. Huge play by the linebacker Banks. Watch him as he's going to get up the field, find a spot in that B gap. He comes completely clean. They bring more than Pitt has to block off the left side. And a huge defensive stand for Tennessee. Big play by Jeremy Banks. You and I were talking after our meeting with Tim Banks yesterday about how impressed we were with him and that potentially a head coach down the road. I mean, what he's doing with all the players they lost. I mean, every third down. He's bringing something different and they're going to try a 56 yarder here. Tennessee does have a player deep and they're going to get a chance at a return here. Jackson. Still going breaks a tackle a flag down which is too bad for Tennessee because Jackson is still going inside the 30 another flag Jackson all the way for the touchdown. But will it come back? Two penalty flags are down, one back at the Tennessee 10, the other at midfield. A missed field goal returned for a score. Let's see if it's negated by flags. I think they're going to get an illegal block in the back right there around the 10 yard line. It was hard to tell from my vantage point. If the Tennessee blocker was able to get his head across, possibly with some of the discussion is between the officials, huge flags pending here, Dave. Did the block punt earlier come into th the thinking of Pat Narduzzi there to not punt it and to try that 56 yard field goal, which was a good four yard short? Way short. Definitely could have come into the mind. Wait, wait a second here. They, they just called, I think. Called there definitely was in the back on Pitt. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's a mistake there where the signal was made, but waiting on the call here from Stuart Mullins, the referee. ACC crew here today. I thought might be offsetting fouls. Like that initial penalty on Tennessee and then something on Pitt downfield. There are two fouls on the play, one by each team after the change of possession. Illegal block in the back. Return team, number 33. Illegal block in the back. Kicking team, number 41. Those fouls offset. We will replay the down. So replaying the down. So let's see now. Does Pat Narduzzi decide, you know what, we got to punt it, or does he try another field goal? All right, here we go. As you'll see here, Jeremy Banks coming in. He's got to get that head across the inside shoulder, and as you can see clearly, hits him in the two in the back. That's the proper call by the official. So if you're Pat Narduzzi, are you trying it again? He was four yards short. Are you punting? I'm putting the football. Theo Jackson, who just ran 110 yards, was back underneath the goalpost in case they tried the field goal. Think about it, though, guys. If the disadvantage for the field goal unit, you have nothing but offensive linemen on that unit, 
and everybody on the field goal return unit is a skill guy. It's a huge personnel advantage. Pat, Pat Narduzzi cannot do that again. No. Well, that's why you wonder about the block punt earlier if he just was fearful of having a guy run free up the middle for Tennessee. Christo Dula will punt it here, and Theo Jackson has got to be out of breath, although he did get a little bit of a break as they were trying to sort out the penalties. He's back at the 10 yard line. That was almost one of the greatest plays in Tennessee history, if not for the flags. You think of all the incredible plays of the course of this iconic program. Trying to recapture the glory days as that ball did not cross the plane. The player was in the end zone, but the ball was not. And therefore, that's an excellent play by Trey Tipton, the seventh year player, to down it at the one yard line. We talk about it all the time. Football is a game of three phases. We talk so much about offense, defense, special teams on display today here at Knoxville. As you see there, Theo Jackson getting a much needed rest after he took a missed field goal, 109, negated by penalties. One thought, though, partner, if they just let that be a missed field goal, Tennessee's got the ball at the 38. Now, after an excellent punt and special teams job by Pitt, Tennessee starting backed up inside their five from the three. They got the backup quarterback, Hendon Hooker, in there because of Milton banged up. A good running lane up the middle for the true freshman. And out past the 15-yard line is Jalen Wright. He had four carries all last week, and the coaches said he was just okay. He's got to be more decisive. Well, he looks that now with the other two running backs out today. Gets another carry here on first down, and this time is stopped after a gain of one. And for the most part of this game so far, Tennessee's been unable to establish the line of scrimmage to run the football. There was a big chunk run from Joe Milton early on in this game of 54 yards. And other than that, Pitts really had their way. Good to see Tennessee starting to get this rushing attack going. Three straight carries for right, and he is brought down at the line of scrimmage. There's a penalty flag down. Keyshawn Camp, who had the forced fumble that led to the Milton injury, made the tackle there. Holding number 76 offense after this is to the goal second out Javantez Spragans with the penalty and Tennessee in double digits now with penalties so you take a look at the other games going on today on the family of networks Iowa Iowa State ABC coming up in two hours from right now and then Washington Michigan 8 Eastern ABC I wonder how Washington responds after the poor performance losing to FCS Montana Michigan Good start to the season. That's an intriguing matchup coming up tonight. And while second and 18 here for Hendon Hooker through just one pass last week, grad transfer from Virginia Tech, started 15 games for the Hokies. Play fake here. Looking downfield, throwing a deep ball, incomplete. Good coverage. Callaway had the touchdown in the first half, being defended by Greg Hallett. Third down. It was outstanding coverage down the field, and Hooker had all day to survey the field, locate his target. Really nobody open as he takes another shot to Jimmy Callaway, but Hallett right there in perfect position. So third down and 18. And be careful here. Backed up. This pit pass rush is ferocious. And you got a true freshman running back in pass protection, always worrisome. Good point. We move him over to the left of Hooker. See if Pitt brings pressure here. They rush four. Hooker from the end zone dumps it off to right. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 10 yard line. Shot battle on the push out. And so Tennessee will have to punt from its own end zone. Yeah, right in there clearly, Tom, just to be a pass catcher and something easy, get the ball out quick. Yep. With the anticipation of that Pitt rush getting home quickly. I know it's a conservative call that might, you know, that might not sit well with some Tennessee fans. I think that's the right call backed up in your own end zone. Get the ball out quick and not have something disastrous happen like we saw in the opening possession. Paxton Brooks, six foot six inch punter, gets rid of it from the goal line. Stovall signaling. That's an excellent punt. Fair caught at the 40 yard line, 50 yard boot. 
no return. Early third quarter here in Knoxville. And Pitt leads by seven. ESPN College Football presented by Marathon is brought to you by Walmart. Save money, live better. And Allstate, save money like a champion with Allstate. Earlier this month, four former volunteers immortalized with statues outside Neyland Stadium, all four representing significant firsts for black football players at Tennessee, including T. Martin, the first SEC black quarterback to lead his team to a national championship. That's the last time the Vols won not only a national title, but an SEC title. The last time they won the East was back in 2007. And right now they trail Pitt in this SEC ACC matchup 27 20 with the Panthers back on offense. And that's the level of expectation around here for Tennessee football right. That's what Josh Heupel and his staff are charged with trying to get it back to where it previously has been here at Rocket Top. And a run play Davis nowhere to go maybe a half yard. Dusty you went to Oklahoma Josh Heupel was a national championship quarterback at Oklahoma. You guys have known each other for a long time. What do you think is the biggest challenge for him as the head man here at Tennessee? Well, I think it starts with just personnel, right? I mean, he's only got 71 scholarship players. There's a mass exodus of transfers whenever he took this job. Obviously, NCAA investigation still pending. I think it's about him recruiting, getting players here at Tennessee. Pick it with a completion and Addison into Tennessee territory down to the 42. You know, he told us whenever we talked to him yesterday, number one thing he wanted to get to know his players. Number two, recruit and hire a staff. He's put together a good staff. He says that the connection on the team is really starting to come together. And we got no one better can talk about recruiting than our guy on the sidelines, Tom Luganville. But it does get down to recruiting. That's going to be what Josh Heifel and his staff have to do in the foreseeable future. Pick it. Crawl with the catch and brought down after a gain of four. Let's go to Matt in the studio. All right, guys, kind of a back and forth between Oregon and Ohio State. Buckeyes score, Oregon responds, Travis Dyer on the left side. And right now it is Oregon up 28-14 in the third quarter at the shoe. It's the beauty of college football. Everybody buries the Pac-12 after last week. And what if Oregon goes into the shoe and ends up winning that game? Second down and five. Davis fighting for yardage gets close to the first down. Danico Slaughter gets him to the ground. So third down and short. Another big third down with this Tennessee defense. Feels like we've said that about every 30 seconds. Well, I'll tell you what, they've held their own, guys. I, I think if anything coming away from this football game, if you're a Tennessee fan, I don't think they can afford to get injured, but this defense has played their tails off today. Be about a 49 yard field goal from here, which might be out of Sam Scarton's range after we saw how short he was on that 56 yard try. Tennessee bringing pressure off the edge. They ran right at the blitz, and down goes Davis. A loss on the play of one. Now you're looking at a 50 yard or longer here if you're pit, unless you go for it on fourth. Jalen McCullough, watch him come down, creep right at the snap. He times this up perfectly, unaccounted for. And he knifes his way into the backfield with a big tackle for loss. And Pitt will go for it after the one yard setback. Fourth down and two at the 33 yard line of Tennessee. Pickett will throw. As time, everybody covered. Pickett in trouble. Gets away. Moving to his left. He's going to run it. And he gets drilled, but he picks up the first down. He told us yesterday he wants to get hit. He likes it. And boy, he was not afraid there as Mitchell and Jackson were converging on him. Got the mentality of a linebacker. It's excellent coverage down the field. Looks like he's got nowhere to go. But Pickett's athleticism keeps it alive. Watch the toughness. Lowering the shoulder, fighting through Tennessee defenders, and converting on fourth down. The toughness clearly on display there from Kenny Pickett. And he, the coaches told us that we got to tell him a couple times, get down. I, I know you don't mind getting hit. I know you actually kind of like it, but we kind of need you. So be careful. Oh, he's going to learn. But he had to do that there. Otherwise, he doesn't get the first down. If he tried to slide, he would not have gotten it. Back to the rush attack. Davis picking a hole. 
And tossed aside at the 20 yard line by Jawan Mitchell. Good pickup of eight. Really good patience by Vincent Davis. Nothing there initially. Doesn't get in too big of a rush. Takes his time. Makes a jump cut. And what looked like not much of anything, a quality pickup on first down. Second down and three on the cusp of the red zone here. Kenny Pickett has had an outstanding game today for Pitt. 223 yards and a touchdown. He'll throw it here, taking a shot, and it's an incomplete pass, but there was contact. Multiple flags down. Mack interfered with by Warren Burrell inside the 10 yard line. Number four, defense. Automatic. First down. Warren Burrell gets a fistful of jersey. You see the left hand working there on Taysir Mack. He was tugging, trying to keep him close. The 11th penalty today for the Tennessee Volunteers. It's in good shape right there. I don't know why he felt that he had to grab him. He had great position, as good yeah. as you're going to have on a back shoulder ball. No question. So first down and goal at the five. Vincent Davis. 12 carries. We have not seen a Banna Kanda in a while at running back. Pick it going under center here. He'll give to Davis. Dumped at the five, so maybe one there. Flowers on the tackle. Big target in the red zone here, fellas, for Lucas Kroll. They go empty here, Pickett. Throws, and Mack can't come up with it incomplete. It'll be third down and goal. Burrell in coverage. Burrell really doing a quality job getting that ball loose. Ball a little bit thrown behind the intended target, but Burrell right there to ensure that pass isn't complete. Yes, behind, but you gotta catch that, don't yeah. you? Through your hands. It might cost Pitt points here. Leading by seven. Pick an eight of nine on third down. This is third and goal from the five. And it's a quarterback draw. Pick it down to the one. And tackled short of the goal line. You would imagine the Panthers would go for it here. Looks like it's definitely short. Quarterback draw. See Pickett just kind of leaning forward, plowing ahead. I got to think quarterback sneak might be a call here for Kitty Pickett. They just brought in an extra offensive lineman as well and the fullback. Fourth down and goal from inside the one. I think Kitty Pickett's calling his own number. Quarterback sneak, Pickett pushing, and he got in. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. was the second effort because on the first try he got stuffed but Pickett driving those feet was able to cross the goal line. It was a really good job by the initial surge of the Tennessee front. Nowhere for Pickett to go. I mean, that's, I mean, that's outstanding job with the penetration. You see him spin, keep his legs moving, and get the football over the goal line. Second time on fourth down on this drive. Kenny Pickett converts on the ground. We've been talking about his toughness clearly on display on that touchdown drive. His good buddy Peyton Manning, I'm sure, approves of the play of Pickett today. Terrific throwing it and running it. And Pitt now with a two score lead. The extra point makes it 34 to 20. 449 to go in the third. The Panthers are in command. Barry with a studio update. Notre Dame and Jack Cohn picking up where they left off. Michael Mayer, the tight end, wide open for the touchdown. Irish up early on Toledo, 7 0, beginning of the first quarter. Ohio State going for it on fourth and two. CJ Stroud forced down the pocket. No pass interference called. Oregon ball up 28 14. All right, Matt, closing moments there of the third, and the Ducks. 
with that two touchdown lead. Pitt has a two touchdown lead over Tennessee on the road here in Knoxville. Bayless Jones is deep. See if the balls can answer with a backup quarterback in the game. That's a live ball. Ricochets into the arms of Jones, and he's got some room down the sideline. And he's tackled by the kicker, Ben Sauls, at the 37 yard line, but a nice return. Saul is going to get some respect from his teammates. Extra yard for Teachers Week, an annual effort led by the College Football Playoff Foundation that brings college sports together to support not our great teachers across the country at games and on social media. To learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers, follow it at CFP Extra Yard. And we're showing you John Morgan the third, his mom Tessa, principal, dad John Jr., guidance counselor in Prince George's County School District in Maryland. John Morgan the third, a junior. Tennessee ball play action and the pass is pulled in in pit territory by Princeton Fant for a first down that's Hendon Hooker the backup quarterback on for the injured Joe Milton with the completion RPO and an outstanding job by Fant going down catching that ball low. Off play action Hooker dumps it off to Fant again and tracked down at the 35 yard line but just like that consecutive plays. And Tennessee on the move. Easy throw, getting Hinden hooking Hooker into a rhythm. A little dump down into the flat and fan. Nice job after the catch. Another play action. In trouble. Flag down, and so is the quarterback. Elijah Cansey there first for Pitt. Hooker loses about seven. See what the flag is. About? Holy, holy number 87 offense. 10 yard penalty. Correction, the penalty's declined. Second down. Instead of second down, or first down to 20, it's second down. Well, Elijah can't see. He is a quick twitch defensive tackle. Watch him win with the quick swim. He is past Spragans before he can even get out of his stance. And then Fant tries to help out, but he can't. Excellent individual effort by the defensive tackle, Elijah can't see. Again, they decline. And a penalty take the uh, result of the play, an eight-yard loss, so second down at 18. Hooker, a shovel pass, and right on the catch, but Pitt does a good job to adjust and make the play after a short game. So you're looking at third down and 15 at the 40-yard line, and again, Tennessee going quick here, maybe four down territory. Obviously depends on what happens here on third down and 15. Four man front's been getting home lately for Randy Bates. Expect he's going to deploy seven in coverage and rush four. Everybody covered downfield. Hooker takes off at the 35. Great cutback. He gets the first down and into the red zone. And then Hooker made that happen on third down and 15. He gets 23. How about this move at the end? Little head fake. Cam Bright flies right past. Huge third down pickup to keep this drive alive. Right, if they score the touchdown, that might be the most important play of the day. Hooker, couple of fakes, now looks. Throws to the end zone. The receiver pushed out of bounds. There are a couple of flags down. The receiver was bumped out of bounds by Brandon Hill. That was Walker Merrill. And there's an injured pit player also. That's Cancy, guys. Yeah, Elijah Kinsey, freshman All America a year ago. Two flags were thrown. Elijah Prior to the pass, holding number 25 defense. Half the distance to the goal and an automatic first down. That'll put the ball inside the 15 yard line. A.J. Woods, the guilty man for Pitt, but. If you're a Panther fan right now, you're holding your breath because maybe your best defensive player right now is on the ground. Hate to see that for any player. What Kalijah Kansi means to this defensive front. Remember, they're replacing two All Americans in Patrick Jones, Rashad Weaver. Though they were ends, what Kansi gives you on the interior is just one of a phenomenal pass rusher and disruptor. Hope that he's okay. So while we have a moment, let's go back to the studio. Here's Matt. All right, guys, checking in another SEC East team. South Carolina down seven until right said Zeb drops a dime to the carry-on joiner. 
We are tied at 14 apiece between South Carolina and East Carolina. He's up Nolan. With the touchdown pass, can't see walking under his own power. Again, you hope it's just a cramp. We, we saw a couple players go down earlier. It is very humid today, temperature around 80. So after the holding, it's first and goal for Tennessee. A great response here by Hendon Hooker, the backup quarterback, the transfer from Virginia Tech, coming on for the injured Joe Milton. You see Milton on the Tennessee sideline. And Hooker waiting now throwing got a man it's caught touchdown Jacob Warren on the catch. Beautiful design and execution by Josh Heupel. Well Dave we saw them working on this over and over yesterday with Joe Milton in the red zone fake the quarterback run game. Get those linebackers up and sneak the tight end up over the middle. Well executed by Hendon Hooker. And again, it was that third down and 15 run by Hooker that kept the drive alive. Then he throws the touchdown pass, the second of the day. The extra point is good, and it's a seven point game late in the third here on Rocky Top. Oh, right, well, here we go. Here's Warren, and as he's going to work over, then he's just going to release and go right to the middle. And Cam Bright's too late. Watch Hinton Hooker as he comes up. Linebacker gets sucked up. Wendell Davis vacates the middle of the field. Jacob Warren wide open. And good touch on the football, putting it high where his six foot six tight end can go up and make the play. Outstanding answer by the Tennessee Volunteers. And, and I'll tell you, Dust, I was standing literally right at the back end of the end line. That had to be a perfect throw. When we watched the design of that in practice yesterday, you're usually going to catch somebody on defense peeking, have some eye violations, and then that tight end pops wide open. That was because of Hendon Hooker. That was actually fairly well covered. And you wonder for Pitt if Kalijah Kansi's on the field, if you can even run that play that well, because he's obviously good at getting upfield. He's been in the backfield a lot today, but there was a ton of time there for Hooker to make that happen. Also important I think just for this Tennessee program and how they're trying to establish themselves down 14 wasn't going their way and you see some fight yep. you see some toughness coming back and answering with the big score. Two touchdowns for Hooker one on a catch and run. In the first half by Jimmy Callaway Warren with the second. Well, the play clock hit zero before the kick. And be fair caught. It'll be a touchback. We'll come out to the 25 yard line. Coming up later today, although not much later, we're getting closer to that to kickoff in Ames between Iowa State and Iowa. And then tonight it's Michigan, Washington at 8 o'clock from the big house. You can watch all the games on the ESPN app. One app, one tap. And coming into the season, you knew Iowa, Iowa State was going to be a great game. But now that you got both teams in the top 10, can Brees Hall get it going against that Iowa D? He was negated a week ago, just 69 yards on 23 carries. It's a stifling Hawkeye front seven. It'll be a fantastic matchup later on this afternoon. We Ten got a good one here. Yeah, Tennessee crowd is back into it too. And a jet sweep, Addison. Got the edge and out to about the 30. So good play on first down, gain of five. They're trying to get the ball to Jordan Addison any way they can. He's the go to guy. He is a problem for opposing defenses out in space. Banacanda back in the game, flanking Pickett. It will throw it on second down, going for a Banacanda, and he's in trouble. Lassoed in the backfield, a loss of about four on the play. Tennessee was all over that. Solon Page, the third, makes it third long. Quality open field tackle to get the ball carry on the ground and set up third and long. An area that Kenny Pickett has thrived so far today. Pickett backing up, leaving the pocket. And 
throws it away. A three and out for Pitt. And the Panthers will kick it back to the Vols. Well, you've been talking about it, Tom. Tim Banks has to be happy with the way his defense has stepped up and answered the bell several times here throughout the course of this ball game. Following up a touchdown drive to get Tennessee back in this game, a quick three and out. Tim Banks couldn't have dialed it up any better. No doubt about it. They've played hard. Tennessee blocked a punt earlier. Will they come after Chris Dulo here? You see Pitt bring another player closer to the line of scrimmage, closer to the ball. They do get a man through, but the kick is away. That was actually the guy that blocked the punt. It's an excellent kick, and the fair catch made by Flowers around the 22-yard line. Do you sense, Dusty, that momentum has changed? You've got a veteran Pitt team with a veteran quarterback that is okay being in this position, but do you feel like momentum has shifted here? I do. This crowd has come alive. They've gotten back into it. That offensive touchdown drive injected some life into this Tennessee football team, and then you see the defense answer. What a big possession this becomes for Hendon Hooker in Tennessee. Tennessee, you talked about it earlier, what they're trying to establish here after all this program has been to. Josh Heifel is the sixth different head coach at Tennessee since 2008. Jeremy Pruitt, after year three in a three and seven season, one of the worst seasons in terms of win percentage in the history of Tennessee football, and then the investigation into recruiting violations. They don't know the results of that investigation, might not until well after the season. Lost a lot of players in the transfer portal. Some team players removed from the team as well as there's some movement there and a flag down. Josh Heupel trying to win back the trust of the fans. He got a, a huge round of applause when they announced his name before Illegal kickoff. Snap. Center, five-yard penalty, first down. First down. You just look here at all the players that you're talking 30 different guys. And three players dismissed. Eric Gray, we saw last week at Oklahoma. They do get an influx of some talent as well. They got some players that came over via the transfer portal to Knoxville. In trouble, and down goes Hooker. Oh, got out of there. And then they finally get him down to the 10. He got hit like four times, loss of seven. David Green with the tackle. You'll see here, good coverage down the field. Cam Bright comes loose on the blitz, but Hendon Hooker evades the initial tackler, but a host of Panthers there to bottle up. Horrible start. You get the penalty and then a sack. Now you're at second and 22. Here's a shovel pass that Pitt has snuffed out. Good stiff arm, though, by Wright. Gets positive yardage, but not much. Hallett and Green were there, so it's third down and long in the final minute of the third. You referenced that penalty. That's the area I think Josh Heifel is really going to harp on his team about the inflicted wounds we've seen all throughout the course of this ball game. Pat Narduzzi called a timeout. Pitt had 12 guys on the field. Failed recognition by Hooker, though, to just snap the ball. Pitt, their first of the half. It looked like Tennessee was set. Right, just snap it there. You got an easy five yards. And that's what they want to get out of this offense, right? Try to get a defense tired. Try to get them substituting in different situations, and they can catch them off balance and sometimes catch them with 12 or more on the field. Missed opportunity there by the volunteer offense. And, and Kansi got hurt earlier. Now you got Keyshawn Camp, the other starting defensive tackle. It's down for Pitt. You, get, you, you just wonder if this is another cramp in need of hydration here. You saw him having some water there as they were trying to work on that left leg. Keyshawn Camp making one of the biggest plays in this game so far. Yeah, Eric Booze raining down here. Not sure what they saw in the Jumbotron. They feel like he was faking an injury, Dave. They feel like once they had 12 on the field, that the player realized it. I'm not saying, of course, that that was the case. That's what the fan reaction is. And yeah, they did, you know, lose the timeout either way. All right, here's Camp. Give you guys a look at it, let you decide for yourself at home. Trying to run a guy off. Okay, yes, that's not even good acting. I mean, here's the only thing, though, is you saw a Tennessee player go down earlier, right? Just standing over the ball, go down. Here's Jones, out past the 25, didn't get the first down. And punt the ball. Heat is an issue, humidity is an issue, and you just don't know, right? I mean, it. It looked like an acting job, but 
There was no penalty. Play on fourth down. Tennessee's going to have to punt. Did see that earlier where a Tennessee defender was just standing there and then just went to the ground. Tyler Barron. We haven't seen since. That's the end of the quarter. So Tennessee will punt it back to Pitt when we start the fourth. An entertaining game here. Week two of the college football season. Pitt trying to win on the road. Leads by seven going to the fourth on Rocky Top. Video update Ohio State, Oregon. Fourth down for the Buckeyes. Need to convert. CJ Stroud, good toss. Garrett Wilson, first down, sets up Travion Henderson. The talented true freshman to get the Buckeyes within a touchdown 28-21. However, Oregon driving will keep you guys updated as your game comes to a close. After last week and what happened in the Pac-12 saved UCLA. Save being the appropriate word because they really saved the Pac-12 from getting absolutely obliterated by uh, the media. Rightly so for the way it performed. But man, if they can sneak that one in without Kayvon Thibodeau to win in Columbus statement by Mario Cristobal the um, that meeting you're talking about yourself right yes getting after the uh, pact of yes. Washington goes into the big house too can that's, get a win that's the, yep tonight on ABC 8 Eastern time still a quarter to go though in Columbus Tennessee punting it back to Pitt here trailing the Panthers by seven taking the play clock down Stole ball. A uh, punt that took forever to come out of the sky. Fair caught at the 25 yard line. 47 yard boot. As we look at some of the other games about to start over on ESPN2, you got number two Georgia, you got Iowa, Iowa State, 430 ABC, Texas in action tonight, ESPN. The game that Dusty mentioned from Michigan, Utah, BYU will be a good one. 10 15 Eastern, ESPN tonight. Holy War, late night tonight. Charlie Brewer, the Baylor transfer, taking over that Utah Ute offense. BYU has Utah this week, Arizona State next week, but a lot of Big 12 games in its future. Vanakanda, we haven't seen a lot of here since the first half, running off the left side and getting maybe three out to the 28 yard line, brought down by Theo Jackson, who's been everywhere on defense and special teams in this game. You know, Dusty, I think Pitt's got to be very careful not to play, not to lose here. They've lost a little steam, a little momentum. Feel like they're getting a little conservative. Play action here for Pickett, and he has a completion. And First down for Jared Wayne as he bounces off of a teammate and he's still going inside the 35 of Tennessee. Made a big play in the first half, throwing a touchdown pass. Here after contact and the contact coming from a teammate, he gets a big run. What's well, poor tackling by Tennessee? Jared Wayne has got to be tackled after he catches the football. Several Tennessee defenders unable to get him down and a big gain after the catch for Jared Wayne. 40 yard pickup. Pickett going back to work. Guns it over the middle complete inside the 20. Addison wrapped up at the 11th. First down for Pitt. Excellent drive here engineered by Pickett. To see Addison come right across the middle of the field. Excellent route as he's working on the linebacker Jawan Mitchell. So elusive with the football in his hands after the catch. A couple of good strikes here from Kenny Pickett. Banakanda off the left side and he's hit but he kept his foot moving and did not touch the ground with his knee. I think he put his hand down but his knee or leg wasn't down so he kept running and got all the way down to the five yard line. Let's take a look here to make sure that he wasn't down. Really good awareness by Banakanda. See Banks come in but he never goes down. Hand on the ground, shin, knee, never touch. He's up and getting Nice pickup. Second down and four at the five yard line. Davis getting the carry here. And he's brought down at the point of attack by Matt Butler, the senior leader of that defense. Third down. 
Enjoyed talking to Matthew Butler yesterday. Very cerebral defensive tackle. Good first step. Going to be a key piece in the interior of that ball defense. Can Tim Banks' squad come up with another stop? Hit quarterback running empty early. And they can get a first down before the end zone. Pickett will throw. Pass over the middle is caught by Addison. Touchdown, Panthers. Perfect. Perfect. Pickett went to his best player. His favorite target, Jordan Addison. Just working on the inside, just a simple slant. He gets inside of McCullough. That pass thrown perfectly away from the defender. Easily, easy catchable ball for Jordan Addison. And Kenny Pickett answers for the big touchdown drive. The third touchdown that Pickett has accounted for. Two through the air, one on the ground. The point after makes it 41-27 Pitt. Well, it was Jared Wayne breaking tacklers with a big gain to get this drive going. And Kenny Pickett to his favorite target, Jordan Addison, perfectly placed ball, Pitt on top. Welcome back to Knoxville. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, Tom Lugan, Bill Pitt leading by two touchdowns, Kenny Pickett has been phenomenal all day long and look at that closing in on passing Dan Marino for second all time in passing he would trail only Alex Van Pelt Pickett not afraid of the big moment he's got five fourth quarter comebacks in the course of his career that hadn't happened at Pitt in 50 years to have that many Bayless Jones electing to run that out and he's got the edge at the 30 yard line and again the kicker makes a tackle I guess when you need a kicker to make a play you better call Sauls. He just got the stop. Here's Matt Barry in the studio. All right guys every time Ohio State responds here comes the duck Maliki Matsubo on the receiving end of this Anthony Brown touch and Anthony Brown's played pretty well today and right now the Ducks up 35 21 fourth quarter. Why is my wow Oregon through? extending the lead Sauls was hurt after he made that play. Also, another player down, Wendell Davis, shaken up as well for the Panthers. Nice Just job getting in there. Good, good position. Well done. Second tackle of the day. Tough guy. By the way, Dave, you think we're letting you get away with not acknowledging your better call Saul's? <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. I've never even seen the show. I just what? heard of it. Come, Come on, on, dude. No. Breaking Ben, very no solid. Come on, I do. Just okay. haven't seen it yet. Okay. I work for a living. I mean. <laughs> All right, Tennessee ball. Work? This is fun. Fair point. Ball on the ball, 39 after that good return. Wow. That's an airmail by uh, Hendon Hooker. Not sure who the intended receiver was. Second down. You know, Dusty, one of the criticisms of this offense today, I'm not saying it's going to be this way six weeks, two years, five years, is there's no middle ground. You're either quick screen behind the line of scrimmage or a vertical shot and limited run game. Hooker, quarterback run, got a lane into pit territory. And again, it takes several defenders after contact to finally get into the ground. Get it close to 20 in a first down. Really nice job, quarterback draw. As you see the true freshman, Jalen Wright, get up and get a key block. Big pickup. Long throw here to the sideline. Warren with the catch. And brought down out of bounds at the 35 yard line by Brandon Hill. So a gain of six. Back to your point, Tom, there's no question the intermediate passing attack not really in for Tennessee at this point. I right. think that's something that'll come with time. Another play action. Wide open is Warren. He caught that one inside the 10. They finally drag him down. Hallett brings him to the ground at the two yard line. They missed that play in the first half. Hooker didn't miss here, though. Just like we saw earlier on the goal line, play action pass. This time, this time Warren lined up at the line of scrimmage, wide open in the middle of the field. Tennessee trying to get up there and snap it. They do and hand it off. Right slips a tackle. 
was fighting for the end zone but got pushed back and so it'll be second and goal from the one. Another answer here by Hendon Hooker and this Tennessee offense. Second straight time when Pitt has taken a 14 point lead. A quick answer. We'll see if Tennessee can find the end zone. Quarterback run game. Got to be a piece of what's in play here. Instead, give to right. He gets hit at the point of attack. And I don't think he got it. What a great tackle because it looked like he was going to get across. He got drilled and got spun back and did not get in. It's third and goal. Wow, what a big hit. Spinning right all the way around. Felt like excellent double team here by Mays and Spragans. The hole's open. Oh, I see think Brandon Hill come in. That ball looked like he got over. Yes, I agree. Let's see here. Oh, it's so hard to tell though when he can't from that angle see if the ball crossed the plane, but watch the hit here by Hill. It spins him around, but was he already in? How do you overturn this though? Ah. Unless we, we have a shot down the line. Here we go. It's a good look right here. You Where's can't the see football? the ball. Yeah, I can't see the ball. It's gonna be. I don't know how you can overturn. I don't think you can. They can piece it together with all the replays we just showed you, but awfully hard to overturn the ruling in the field. Excellent movement on the right side. Cade Mays, Javantez Spragans really came down hard, paved the lane. Big credit to Brandon Hill, the safety coming down, lowering the boom. And at least it appears keeping Jalen Wright out of the end zone. The third down and goal from just outside the end zone. And you would assume they're looking at two plays here if they don't get in going forward on fourth down, down 14 points here with 10.23 to go. I mean, Jalen Wright's going to be mean, a good player, guys. Just a freshman. I know Tennessee's thin at running back, but he's a guy they can start to count on. Right. No Evans today. Ty and Evans out due to health reasons. Jabari Small got hurt, got injured on the final play of the first half. So the true freshman Wright getting all the work here in the second half. I, I just think, again, it's really hard to overturn this with replay. I mean, you could look at where. Contact was made by Hill, but I still think because the ruling of the field was that he's short, it's impossible to overturn it. So the ruling of the field stands. Third down and goal from inside the one. Is this time to just have Hendon Hooker just go? That's what I would say. Yeah, because then you get the plus one, right? You get the added blocker when you go with the quarterback run game. It's been extremely effective here so far. Tennessee typically huddle. They don't go under center. Snap to Hooker right on the carry pushing. He's in. Touchdown Tennessee. And it's a one score game again. No doubt about that one for Jalen Wright from one yard out. Just give it to the true freshman and let him turn those legs. Good push up front by the Tennessee offensive line. And you see Jalen Wright just continue to turn those legs and fight his way into the end zone for the big volunteer answer. Tom talked about how the coaches feel about Wright. That's one of the reasons they were so hard on him after week one. They didn't think he played well. He only had four attempts, so they didn't like the way he ran. I think they'll be much more pleased watching the tape today. Point after is good from McGrath, and it's a seven-point game again. Hendon Hooker with his arm and his feet. Getting Tennessee back in the game, trailing by seven. ESPN College Football is presented by Marathon, driven forward, and in part right, by Saxby's, featuring fresh made chicken tenders, wings, and salads. It's one of the best scenes in college football. Just great to have the fans back around the country. 
but it's a special place here in Knoxville and this feels even Tennessee doesn't win this game it, it feels different just watching the fight with this team and talking with the players and coaches here yesterday different buzz around this football team started out with a nice win over Bowling Green and, and battling out here today and who knows how many games Tennessee is going to win this year but you can see how well coached this group is and how hard they play they've had injuries today and they've been able to overcome those and make this a game again down seven Pitt's going to start this drive and it's 25 with veteran quarterback Kenny Pickett 38 career start He's been terrific all day long only eight incompletions he's got two touchdown passes a rushing touchdown he touched on this earlier but if you're just joining us Kenny Pickett came back to Pitt to the surprise of everybody on the Pitt coaching staff but one of the reasons as he looked at where he was going to get drafted he reached out to his good friend Peyton Manning they, they became close when Pickett was attending the Manning camps he reached out to Peyton who then decided to reach out to some of his friends that are general managers in the NFL to get a better idea of where Pickett might get drafted came back with the information Pickett and Peyton didn't like it so Pickett decided to come back to try to get drafted higher and to try to win an ACC title Let's see what he does here off play action on first down Pickett throwing to the sideline and it's incomplete a sliding attempt made by Mack he couldn't come up with it and Kenny Pickett so good on the move just a little bit short of his intended target Taste here, Matt, typically very accurate as he moves to his right, just misfired a little bit short and wide of his intended target. A rare incompletion, just the ninth today by Pickett. On second and ten, he'll throw it again. And that pass nearly intercepted by Theo Jackson, who stepped in front of Jordan Addison. Well, Theo Jackson is the heart and soul of this defense. Reading the quarterback's eyes, undercutting the route, able to get that right hand on the pass before it gets to Jordan Addison. Pickett has been at his best in these situations today on third down. Look at those numbers. You got a stoppage of play before the snap. Don't see a penalty flag down. Time Timeout. Time out. Tennessee. Third first of a half. Well, Tennessee didn't like what it saw defensively, but might want that timeout back later. Matt Barry with the studio update. You got a one score game there. And Rocky Top also have one in Columbus. Another fourth down conversion. CJ Shroud to Jackson Smith and Jigba. He gets in. Ohio State's made the defensive stop 35-28. Moments ago, checking in on Notre Dame in South Bend. Kyron Williams, the speedster running back, makes one cut, and he's gone. Notre Dame now up 14-6 on Toledo. Pass. Looking forward to the end of your game. Back to you. And it's a big third down here. Third and 10. Kenny Pickett has owned this down. His team is up seven. Ball is on the Panther 25. Pressure off the edge. Pickett rolling, throwing a deep single coverage, and it is incomplete, knocked away. Addison, the intended receiver, and Burrell got a hand in there to strip it at the last second. What's well, an outstanding defensive play by Warren Burrell. Initially, Addison gets turned loose, and his picket was rolling to his right. He tried to locate him, but it was a makeup by Burrell, and he gets in to get his hand in there to remove the football. As he's rolling here, Addison wide open. How about Burrell in great position gets that left hand in and knocks the ball away huge stop for Tim Banks defense. Keep in mind Tennessee blocked a punt earlier. They're going to set up the return here. Krista Dulu with a poor punt. It takes a pit roll. And it'll be downed 
Now the Panthers at the 32 of Tennessee. The ball's with plenty of time. Two timeouts left, and their backup quarterback, Hendon Hooker, in for the injured Joe Milton. Man, it's a lot of good plays. That might have been the biggest play of the game. That third and 15 carry where he picked up 23 yards. So the touchdown pass to Callaway, who did most of the work here. Great throw here to Jacob Warren in the red zone earlier in the second half. Made several plays with his legs. We saw the third and 15, some other nice runs he's been able to put together. The play action pass to the tight ends have been effective for Hendon Hooker. Transfer from Virginia Tech lost the starting job to Joe Milton, but he's in there now because of the injury. And Pitt up front does an excellent job tackling Jalen Wright. Plus, there's a, a Tennessee offensive lineman that lost his helmet. That's Cade Mays, the right tackle. He's going to have to come out for a play. That's very significant with this second down and long play coming up. Yeah, very problematic. They don't have great depth up front on this Tennessee offensive line already working without Cooper Mays at center. Now you have to remove one of your best offensive linemen on second long. And you bring in Dane Davis a former walk on. That's Jerome Carvin who's playing center today. You normally a guard but you mentioned the injury to Cade's brother Cooper. Second down and nine. Play clock at one. They got a snap, but Josh Heupel's got to burn another timeout. Had to take one on defense on the last possession. And now one here. Now, actually, because of the timeout, Cade Mays can come back in the game, but I still think Heupel would rather save that timeout for later if he needs it. So obviously, Tennessee now down to one timeout. Would love to have that back, but they do get Cade Mays back. He lost his helmet, had to sit out, but because of the timeout, he's back out there. Yeah, huge for them to get him back. You have to wonder, were they concerned about having a former walk-on in and a crucial juncture? They get one of the best offensive line back. Tell you after this play if that was a good move or not. They're running right behind Mays, and Hooker has the first down, staying in bounds. What a great decision. The veteran. Knew exactly where he was on the field. Got an additional six or seven yards and moves the ball to midfield. And how about the lead block out in front? Fant out there in front. Also 23. Jalen Wright, the true freshman, helping out as a blocker, not just a runner. Oh, but another Tennessee penalty. False start. Number four, offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Thirteenth penalty against Tennessee. Inexcusable how sloppy they have been at times so far today. Josh Heupel and not be happy about that aspect of this game. There's a lot to like about the ball so far today, but man, the penalties have just been killing. Hooker off play action, pump fake, looking deep, airing it out, and almost intercepted with one hand by Mathis. There is a flag down thrown at the 20 yard line. The ball was clearly overthrown intended for Tillman. Pass interference. Number 21. Defense. 15 yard penalty. An automatic first down. How about the patience of Hooker to allow this to open up down the field? We'll watch Mathis as he's running with Tillman. He's well, got his hand on his back there. We didn't have a great look at that, but he's grabbing his back. Yeah. I think that's the right call. Yep, I agree. I know Mathis isn't happy, but. Hooker, you got Callaway over here. Can he make the man miss? He does. He's inside the 30, and he gets shoved late and a flag down. Brandon Hill hit him when he was out of bounds. That's going to be 15 more yards. Now it's Pitt with the unforced errors. Self imploding here, just not a smart play. After the play was over. Nice screen on the sidelines, Callaway. I love what Javante Payton does, three down below. Gets a key block to help Callaway get to the edge. And then Brandon Hill clearly gives a shove. So first down 
at the 12 yard line. They go to Callaway again out in space. Two defenders there, and he's tripped up as he tried to get away and loses about 10 yards. By the way, Kalijah Canty is back in the game right now for Pitt, which is big. Keyshawn Camp has not returned. And Pitt did a much better job. They're going to actually say that his knee was down at the 13. So instead of losing 10 yards, he only used, loses one. Second down and 11. And he's going to keep it here. Hooker spins away and down at the seven. It's going to be third down and about five. We welcome those of you watching on ESPN2 as well. Tennessee trying to tie the game midway point of the fourth quarter. Maybe four down territory is enough time that if they don't get it, they could kick the field goal. We'll see. Third down and four. Ball on the six yard line. Hendon Hooker, the backup quarterback, rolling to his right. Hooker going to keep it. Cuts left. He's hit. Driving the feet. Did he get the first down? Pushed back by Servassier Dennis. Where will they spot it? Physical run by Hooker. Just a sweep into the boundary. Jalen Warren out in front. Fan out in front. That's just Hinden Hooker. Lowering the shoulder and fighting for that first down. It's close. Official timeout to measure. I tell you, Dusty, you know, he's the difference in the game. His ability to run and, as you put it, get a plus one advantage. Pitt hasn't had an answer for that. And without his wheels, Tennessee is nowhere near being in this football game in the second half. Joe Milton, Milton was hurt in, in this first half. Hooker comes in, a veteran presence. He's short. It's fourth down. What do you do, guys? Go, you go for it. Hey, no question. I think you got to go for it. They will. They're going to bring in Jacob Warren here. He caught a touchdown pass in this area earlier in the game. I like quarterback power here, Dusty. Yeah, we've seen him run sweep twice on this. You can go quarterback power. Hinden Hooker has shown the ability to be physical, lower his shoulder, and run through contact and make people miss, no doubt. Well, keep in mind, number eight for Pitt, Kalijah Kansi is back on the field. Right over the ball, you see him there. He's their best player. Got injured earlier. Pitt trying to get a stop here on fourth down. Booker will hand it off. Right taken down in the backfield. Tennessee turns it over on downs. John Patrician was back there for the Panthers. The seven-year, 25-year-old makes the play of the game defensively for Pitt. Was well, both off the edge. Good penetration up the middle. And watch here as Pine works off one side, Patrician off the other. No one accounts for him. Elijah Cansey on the interior, bottling everything up. And then both defenders off the edge, Patrician, Pine in the backfield to stymie Jalen Jalen Wright and in that Tennessee drive. I, I tell you, Dusty, I, I, I don't like the call. I don't mind them running it there. I don't like why they ran it the way they ran it in terms of not utilizing the quarterback. They haven't had an effective one back run game all game long. Those spots I like just a good old fashioned quarterback sneak when you just got a couple of inches. Sure. So Pitt taking over on its four yard line. Give to Davis. He's hit and dropped at the line of scrimmage. Trayvon Flowers came firing in there. I think he was hoping for a better result. There's an injured Tennessee player. But boy, Flowers was back there in a hurry. Kind of waited for the running back as Dejon Terry is the injured volunteer. Tennessee down to one timeout left. Terry, one of the transfers that they had added, transferring in from Kansas, one of 10 Power Five transfers that Josh Heupel and his staff were able to bring in. He's really helped the overall depth of this defensive line. He walks off on his own power. Good sign. Meanwhile, Pitt with a second down and nine. Year one of the Johnny Majors Classic. Majors who passed away June of 2020. Legendary player at Tennessee, coach at Tennessee, coach at Pitt, won a national championship there in 1976.
the first meeting between these two teams since 1983 when Majors was the head coach at Tennessee. They'll play again at Heinz Field next year. I kind of like this. I, I hope they no doubt renew this and do it more. It's a, it's a fun game between two very proud programs trying to take the next step here in 2021. Davis about two yards deep in the end zone and Pickett will give it to him and he's hit from behind and dropped for a loss at the three yard line Tyler Barron who was hurt earlier got off a block and made a play it's third and long and Tyler Barron sets the edge and Jalen McCullough comes up and finishes it off excellent job stacking up Kroll the tight end keeping his outside arm free and then a host of balls come in to finish it off Kenny Pickett backed up from his own end zone. He's been magical on third down. Will Mark Whipple even give him a chance to right. put it up in the air? Are they conservative here on third and 11? Tennessee's got to show some discipline. Don't fall victim to the hard count here. Out of the pistol with Pickett standing in the end zone on third down and long. He will throw it. Steps up. Over the middle incomplete. He was going for crawl. Good coverage that time by Jawan Mitchell. Transfer from Texas. And Pitt will have to punt out of its end zone. Remember, Tennessee blocked a punt in the first quarter on this very spot on the field. And Jawan Mitchell, fantastic coverage as that ball goes off the hands of the big tight end Kroll. But Mitchell right there, step for step, making a nice defensive play on a crucial third down. Bayless Jones is deep. Chris Dulu. At the very back of the end zone. Tennessee with 10 on the line of scrimmage. He gets this one away off the side of his foot and it goes out of bounds around the 33 yard line. Let's go to Matt Berry in the studio. All right guys cleaning up some stuff here before we get back to you. Parker White South Carolina down 14 nothing at one point 36 yarder for the win. Gamecocks go on the road and get one 20 to 17 the final. Also, Oregon, Ohio State, another late down conversion for the Buckeyes. CJ Stroud, third and long, and a regrettable mistake for the freshman quarterback. Picked off by Verone McKinley. Ducks looking to kill the clock 35 28. Two and a half left in the field. Wow, that would be. Absolutely enormous for not only Oregon, but the entire Pac-12. Meanwhile, a 31-yard punt, and Tennessee's got the ball at the pit 34. One timeout left, 5.33 to go down seven. Hooker off play action, dumps it off to Warren, and he stopped immediately. So no gain on the play. Keyshawn Camp, who's back out there, made the tackle. Good to see Keyshawn Camp back out there on the field. They have their two outstanding defensive guys in the middle. Kalijah Kansi, Keyshawn Camp. We've seen them both come out at times throughout the course of this second half, both back on the field at a crucial juncture in this game. On second and ten. Play fake again for Hooker setting up, and the pass is picked off. Hill with the interception. He read that beautifully, intercepting Hooker and giving Pitt the ball back with 4.52 to go, leading by seven. Let's watch Brandon Hill. You mentioned it, partner. Watch him with his eyes right here. The vision on the quarterback was outstanding. He's going to follow Hendon Hooker's eyes. He takes him right to the football and an outstanding break for a huge pit interception. Brandon Hill, who earlier had the pat or had the personal foul out of bounds, makes up for it with a massive play and a great job anticipating the route, following Hendon Hooker's eyes and getting the interception. And with Tennessee down to just one timeout. A couple of first downs for Pitt might end the game. See if the Panthers just keep it on the ground here with the clock in their favor. Davis. And stacked up after gain of one. Jalen McCullough leading the charge. 
third turnover turnover of the day by Tennessee and and then Hooker a guy that didn't turn it over a lot in his career at Virginia Tech only seven interceptions and 15 starts but a costly one here in his first real action as a Tennessee volunteer. He's had some bright spots though too and I, I think there's some things to build on depending upon the health and well being of Joe Milton whether he'll be able to go later and Hooker has shown him enough that they can play with him. See if again the Panthers just run it and second down and nine here. Pickett just turns and gives to Davis running room up the gut nice spin out to the 48 so pick up a five or six there third and short now coming up heavy package tackle over runs just an old school power play off the left side where they've got three offensive linemen on the other side of the center effective run on second down big third down coming here is it a run all the way because I don't of the think clock? so I, I get that aspect of it but how good has Kenny Pickett been on third down here so far today. Although in the second half Pitt is one for seven on third down. Although they just got seven yards running on second and ten when Tennessee knew they were going to run the ball. They will hand it off to Davis on third down looking for a crease again the spin he gets the first down to the forty five yard line. That's the second straight play after contact that Vincent Davis has been able to make a play. And that clock now moving three minutes counting with Tennessee just the one timeout. Pitt has not been very effective today running the football. In a huge play. Once again, tackle over on the exact same play. They go power, pull the backside guard, Jay Cradle. And Vincent Davis gets enough to move the chains and keep this drive going. Havana Kanda will come in to replace Davis here on first down at the Tennessee 45. 238 and counting. Pitt taking that play clock down as well to one. Havana Kanda with some room inside the 40 and close to a first down. They'll spot him about a yard and a half short. And Pitt just moving Tennessee off the ball now. I wonder if fatigue starting to set in, Lugs. It's a Tennessee front. They look tired. And this pit offensive line imposing their will at such a critical juncture in this game. Yeah, you see some hands on the hips there. And listen, we've talked today about you know the front line personnel, the ones for Tennessee. They've got some guys, experienced back end, some talented front players. What they do not have is depth, and they cannot avoid injuries. We've seen some of that on offense. They certainly can't avoid it in the offensive line or really anywhere on defense. And Pitt taking that play clock down a first down for all intents and purposes ends the game. Havana Kanda slips a tackle got the first down and probably a win down to the 32 Tennessee has only the one timeout they'll reset the chains and that clock starts up again. Tough piece of running there by Havana Kanda off the left side. Patience as he runs through a couple of arm tackles. That first down might seal it for the Panthers. Pitt's got a chance here, guys. North Carolina goes down last week. Miami goes down. Nobody really wants to talk about Pitt as a as a contender in the ACC. They're not flashy. Well, I'll tell you what. When you got a quarterback, you got a chance. No doubt. I think that's part of the reason we saw the confidence and the optimism of this Pitt coaching staff yesterday when we met with them. 14 super seniors and none more important than Kenny Pickett coming back and putting everything on display here today. Well that pet Narduzzi can't be happy there. They didn't have the right people on the field or too many people so. Had a delay a game penalty. But Pitt in victory formation. See if Tennessee uses a timeout here or made himself some money today. Kenny Pickett. You talk about when you look at some of the key moments of this game and the way he was able to bounce back, make big plays for this team. Really impressed what we saw from the quarterback Pitt. Tom talked about you know Pitt having a chance. The ACC. Against the SEC in week one, not good. Alabama crushing Miami, not really a shock there. This was huge. Georgia, after the win, moved up to number two. 
And Ole Miss defeating Louisville 43 24. ACC is going to get one here. And while this is a young Tennessee team that's in game two of a new era, and Pitt was challenged, got down early. The Panthers took care of business, and they do have to go to Blacksburg, but they have Miami, North Carolina at home. Their crossover game is Clemson, but that game is at Heinz Field. Catching some of the biggest in conference opponents in their backyard. You see the joy over down the sidelines of Pitt. You go on the road to a hostile environment like Neyland Stadium, you just got to find a way to get a win. That's exactly what Pat Narduzzi's bunch did. And for Josh Heupel, there was a lot you like about Tennessee. But man, they've got to clean up those penalties and not shoot themselves in the foot if they're going to piece together the foundational building blocks for this program under Josh Heupel. It's a big win for Pat Narduzzi, Kenny Pickett, and the Pittsburgh Panthers coming into Knoxville and beating the Volunteers 41 to 34. Pickett had two touchdowns through the air a rushing touchdown had a big third down conversion where he took on two defenders and fought through the tackle that kept a drive going that led to points made the decision to come back to school trying to improve his draft status and win an ACC championship and he had a terrific day and you would think next week when they play Western Michigan he's going to pass Dan Marino and move into second all time behind Alex Van Pelt and passing at Pitt. They also have New Hampshire coming up and then we talked about at Virginia Tech but the home games against other coastal teams Miami and North Carolina and also Clemson at Heinz Field. Yeah you referenced there got a chance to start this season 4 0 Western Michigan New Hampshire you would expect. Pitt's going to take care of business and win those before they get an ACC play that game in Blacksburg. It's going to be a good one here in about a month from now. As for Tennessee the balls are home again next week to Tennessee Tech they have to go to Florida. The game with Georgia and Jacksonville have to go to Kentucky and then at Alabama. Don't know how many games the balls are going to win this year but it just felt different today watching them so something to build on in defeat here for Josh Heifel and company against a veteran pit team. For Dusty Dvorak Tom Lugan Bill Dave Pash saying so long from Knoxville Tennessee where Pitt knocks off the balls. ESPN thanks you for watching this presentation of the South.